Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Hello, hello. How's it going, folks? This is it. It's the final case. The final trial of the final case of the final Phoenix Wright game we're going to be playing. It's all built up to this moment. Van Karma's back in the forefront once again. It all comes back to his one case. <laughs> He's orchestrated everything. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to this one. Hernandez, thank you for the five gift subs already. Thanks for the hype train, folks. You're all very welcome to the stream. We're going to give people a good five minutes or so to hop on into the stream. Uh, because once we start, we're going till the end. Long boy stream today. We're just going to go until the end today. We playing the other games? No. This is the end. We're wrapping it up here. Because it feels like the, this is the best point, I think, to wrap it up. Especially how this case seems to be kind of concluding everything in the trilogy. But, like, it's really tying back everything together, which is cool. Yeah, this is the last one, though. Uh, and it's going to be fun. I'm excited. We find out what Grossberg was doing at the boat shack. Honestly, that's still the biggest plot hole in the entire series to, up until this point. No one knows what he was doing there. I don't buy that he was just going for a walk. Still not sure what's going on there. There's something suspicious. No Apollo? No Apollo. Nope. This is the last one. This is it. Those different games will be playing. I have heard that like the quality is very mixed from this point on too. Um, from what I understand. Like it's real hit and miss. Uh, and there's like dozens of them too. So no, this is I think this is the best point to wrap it up. This is like the definitive trilogy. Uh, so that's it. That's what we're gonna do. Oh Jesus Christ with the bits as well. Emperor, thank you for the five K bits. Thank you for the ace attorney streams and episodes. They've been a blast to watch and always bring a smile to my face. Let's end Don Tigre's disguises once and for all. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, Carabear, thank you for the 5k bits as well. Just want to say thanks for all the entertainment and laughs your content has brought, brought over the last few years. I don't, get a, uh, I don't always get the chance to watch streams live. Just want to show my appreciation and support. BS, since this trial seems to be wrapping up loose ends, do you think we will ever find out what Grossberg was at the boathouse? Sadly, I don't think so. I think that is going to be the massive plot hole that jeopardizes the entire otherwise absolutely flawless series. With no faults whatsoever. <laughs> it's a real shame. It all came down to Grossberg. Uh, Doctor, thank you for a thousand bits as well. Thank you, very, thank you very much, guys, for the bits and subs. You're all very welcome to the stream. A few more minutes, and then we're starting. You have until 10 past. We need Matt Pat to make a game theory of what he was doing at the boat house. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. There's only like seven more games? Yeah, and life's short. It's gonna take like four fucking years to play. I don't got that time. There's a lot of stuff I want to play. Only seven. Like, Jesus. That's a bit much. That's a bit much. <laughs> RT touches grass unlike the rest of us. I gotta play Pokemon Go, guys. I haven't played Genshin Impact in a while because I've been so busy with this series. Think of all the anime loot boxes I've been missing out on. Like, come on! I got priorities! I actually have money now! Like, that's how you know things are bad. <laughs> Not the G word! Ah, <laughs> oh, God almighty. I've not played Genshin in a while. <laughs> 
I've not played it in quite some time now. I do want to get back into it though, you know? Watch people lose their minds. Ah, oh, Jesus. Just want to say it's been an honor seeing you go through law school better than you did with your English major. I bought McDonald's since you refused. <laughs> no clue, thanks for the 500 bits. And the slander. Appreciate it. Ah. Two more minutes, and then we start. Everyone's now playing Tower of Fantasy instead of Genshin. Oh shit, you're right! You think I should stream that? You think I should stream that tomorrow? New Genshin game dropped. Oh shit. <laughs> Fucking weep. <laughs> oh, it's so easy to rally us up. Amori is better. I have bad news for you, right? I probably will never be streaming Amori on this channel just because it, it, it's a very intense fandom game and I feel like people watching me play that will be watch, not watching me play but watching for an experience. So I probably never play Amori, but I might play Genshin someday on the channel. <laughs> I can see it happening. I have bad news for you, my man. <laughs> A very bad news. Ah, one more minute. Boria and April Fools 2023. No, we're playing Fortnite April Fools 2023. Sorry, decided. It's finally happening. Nerd, thank you for a thousand bits. Thanks so much for seeing Ace Attorney out through the ups and downs. Some cases are certainly more dubious than others, but it's been great fun watching you play through them all. Thank you very much. No, oh, yeah, I, I, for the most part, like most of the cases are pretty solid. There's just a few stinkers. There's like, eh. Chiefly Big Top. Like, Big Top is in like a league of its own for awfulness. For the most part, it is actually pretty good. I think of the three games right now, I think the first game had the most solid cases. That's Count and Rise for the Ashes in there too. Rise of the Ashes was, was very good, it was just way too damn long. Von Karma case is the best one. The first two cases for me were very solid cases. Like only like the third one is kind of weak, but even then like it's still not that bad. Compared to like the third cases in the other games, like it, it's definitely the best of them. Who's your favorite witness? Probably Bikini. No joke, she was like, she's just really solid. She wasn't like annoying or aggravating. And like, she actually tries to help. She doesn't have this like overwhelming quirk where it's like, hoo hoo hoo! I can only speak in riddles on the stand! It's like, no, like, she's actually trying to help. You know, she knows that like something's going on. I, like, it's actually really appreciate it. Considering some of like the shit that you got to deal with in court. The parrot. Well, I mean, the parrot doesn't have much going on. Right? <laughs> like, I feel like if the parrot is the best witness on the stand, like that's like not saying much about the entire cast of characters. You know, like that's that's pretty worrying. Okay, we've gone over a minute. It is time, gang. Ace Attorney Phoenix Wright Trilogy, the final trial. Before we start, as ever, proper disclosure and proper thing we need to say. No spoilers. Uh, let me update the stream title because I think I forgot to put the command in this time. Uh, no spoilers. I do not wish to be spoiled. I am playing this blind. If I feel like I've been spoiled, spoiled at any point, I will pop the chat in sub mode for the rest of the stream. Uh, any questions I ask are purely hypothetical, unless I say the key phrase, help me chat. Uh, if it looks like I'm struggling with a puzzle, simply smile the pain away. And don't say anything. Okay. 
Yep, no fake spoilers either. Yep, just don't do it. Thank you very much. I think that's everything we need. Thank you to everyone who's here. Thank you to everyone who's subbed. Thank you to everyone who's given bits. Thank you to the mods for being here. Let's go. Bridge to the Turnabout Part 4-1, The Trial. Good morning. Oh, are you by yourself? Ah, morning, Pearls. Mr. Nick, please tell me what's going to happen to Mystic Maya. <laughs> don't worry, Pearls. She's already dead. I'm sorry. We don't know yet. The investigation is still going on, so I wasn't allowed into the inner temple. Oh, I see. So is Sister Iris still trying to remove those trick locks in the training hall? No, she's the defendant in this case, so she can't be at the inner temple. Oh, damn, we're really just leaving Maya to die. She's required to be here in court. Ah, uh, dead. How come she's not here in the defendant's lobby? I have to admit, it's kind of strange. If you're looking for Iris, she's in the prosecutor's lobby. Ed! My- Ed! Ed, you worse! <laughs> What's Iris doing over there? She's going over today's testimony with the prosecutor as we speak. Today's testimony. You heard me. Iris is going to be testifying as a witness for the prosecution. Wait, what? That is a bit weird as a witness for the prosecution considering... She's... The one on trial? I don't know how that works. The prosecutor is squeezing her for a confession. Or so I heard. Francisca von Karma, what are you up to? I know what you're thinking, but Francisca isn't going to be the prosecutor today. What? Then who is? Who else would it be but Gatto? Gatto. Poor Francisca, she got robbed here. This is her case. She was brought on for it. Francisca is engaged in some important work at the Sacred Cavern. The Sacred Cavern? You don't mean that she's... Exactly. She's been out there all night, trying to remove those trick locks. With the head nun's assistance, naturally. We estimate that the last of the locks should be taken care of in about three hours. I hope everything continues to go smoothly, and we receive some good news soon. Yeah, thanks, Edgar. Prosecutor Gatto intends to nail this case shut today. Be prepared to fight like there's no tomorrow. You don't have to tell me that. Today's the last time we're streaming this game, Edgeworth. <laughs> Touché. I can already see it in your eyes. You're not the same fever-ridden, frantic maniac you were yesterday. It's strange. On the way here, I decided that today would be the end of all this. <laughs> we're getting a bit meta. Almost immediately after I made that decision, I felt myself getting stronger. <laughs> Interest. Maybe you passed your cold onto someone else, literally. And with that, I leave the rest in your capable hands, partner. Thanks. I still don't have answers for most of the riddles plague in this case. The circumstances around the murder of Miss Elise Donham. No, I mean Miss Misty Fay. The impossible flight Larry claims to have seen. And... What that woman is really after. I will solve them all and bring this whole tragedy to an end. Hang on one second, there we go. February 10th, 10, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number seven. Oh no, the judge is back! <laughs> Did you think you could finish the game without me? Court is now in session for the trial of Iris of Hazakura Temple. Uh, Your Honor, what are you? Who, me? Well, my little brother came to visit me in my chambers earlier this morning. All of a sudden, in the blink of an eye, he developed a scorching fever and fainted. Wait, is the other judge's brother? <laughs> is this judge supposed to be Canadian as well? Therefore, I'll be standing in for him. I see, Your Honor. So they're brothers. That explains a lot. My poor brother. He looked a bit pale. Not to mention sad that he couldn't be here. 
It's okay though, I brought him some Timbits. He's gonna be all right. It is impossible to predict the future has in store for any of us. This is precisely why people feel the need to judge the past. And we of the court have been charged with the solemn duty of passing such judgment. Well said, Mr. Gotto. I understand exactly what you said, at least up until the end, anyway. <laughs> now, Mr. Grotto, please proceed with your opening statement. Humans are fragile, fickle beings. Our hearts change with the shifting of the tides. There is only one thing that remains a constant in this crazy world. The bitter darkness that lies at the bottom of this mug. So then you mean, um, sorry, I'm not following your metaphors. It's something to do with coffee. What do you mean? During yesterday's trial, the accused refused to admit her role in the crime. But today, she had a change of heart. Sister Iris of Hasakura Temple has a confession to make. Confession? And defendant? Iris, why didn't she discuss this with me first? Very well. This court will now hear the defendant's confession. If she just admits she did it, it's going to be quite problematic for our case. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, always ask for her name and profession. God, oh please. That's one of my rules. Uh, my name is Iris. I'm but a simple nun undergoing training at Hasakura Temple. Witness, is there something that you want to confess to? Yes. But first, I want to apologize to Mr. Wright. I... I can't continue lying to everyone anymore. It's alright. What is it? Mr. Wright, I have to admit that I... I did play a part in this terrible incident. Are you actually confessing? Are you saying that you were the one who murdered Miss Elise Donum? No, I'm not, Your Honor. But I dealt with the cover-up. After the murder took place. After her spirit left, I took the lifeless shell of Mystic Elise. And carried it to the Hazakura Temple Courtyard, where I desecrated it. What?! Uh-oh. Order in the court! Order! Witness! Are you... Are you saying that you were an accomplice to the murder? Yes, that's correct. Well, shit. <laughs> Three minutes in court and I've already covered in a cold sweat. Ha! Everyone on the planet is an accomplice to something. It just happens to be that in this case, it's to murder. Isn't that right, Mr. Trite? Sure, that Gatto. This is the confession they were conferring about. It pains me to say this, but it looks like Iris' testimony was all a lie. <laughs> well, oh yeah, that's been destroyed. We're not getting it back from the back pocket. Now, little lady, if you don't mind, I've got a question for you. Whose crime were you trying to cover up by your actions? Iris was covering for someone. Now I'm definitely up up the creek without a paddle or a life jacket. I've been a Hazakura Temple ever since I was a little girl. Hazakura Temple is run by one of the branch families of the Korean tradition. One of our missions is to protect the main family. I'm sorry, but main family! Yes, and that's why I would dirty myself, if need be, to protect her. The daughter of the master of the Korean channeling technique. Mystic Maya Fei. I thought we could go a game without Maya being tried for murder. Uh, but as is tradition, here we are once again. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Wake up and smell the coffee, try. She's naming Maya. Order, order in the court. Not only did you witness the murder, you know the name of the murderer! I'm terribly sorry, but it's true. I saw her commit the crime with my very own eyes. And then I cleaned up the area to try to protect her. Objection. That's ridiculous. Why, you can never do such a... The defense will refrain from commenting until the appropriate time. Now witness, let's hear your testimony. But yeah, only the prosecution is allowed to interrupt the proceedings in this court. Oh no, you got any metaphors you want to say? 
I like coffee. Well said, Mr. Gatto. That's some valuable, that's some valuable information to share with us. What exactly happened on the night of the crime? Yes, Your Honor. I thought I was prepared for the unexpected, but I never imagined a case of wide up going in this direction. I went to the inner temple that night and saw it all happen in the garden. I saw Mr. Galise strike Mr. Kamaya with a staff. Okay. While Mr. Kamaya was still stumbling, Mr. Galise moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Mr. Kamaya tried desperately to defend herself and stole the weapon. It was only in self-defense. Can't blame her for it. Yeah, she stole the weapon. The weapon was not found there. So it was in self-defense? Yes, Mr. Galise was the one who attacked first. That's why I try my best to protect Mr. Maya. You moved the victim's body to the temple so that Maya wouldn't be suspected. Isn't that right? Not bad. You've got the instincts of a true criminal. Something's not quite right. I'm sure it was established yesterday that Iris never went to the inner temple that night. Okay, so that's what we have to establish today. That the person who did, who did go was that woman. Iris even admitted it. Now, Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Okay, I went to the inner temple that night and I saw it all happen in the garden. But you didn't. <laughs> Sister Iris, your testimony has changed quite a bit since yesterday. You stated yesterday that on the night of the murder, you didn't go to the inner temple. Objection. Did she now? Too bad for you, what she said yesterday doesn't mean much today. By the way, where were you when she claimed that she didn't go? Uh, I, I was in the inner temple's training hall. private conversation between the two of you does not constitute testimony. That will be properly described as hearsay. What do you have to say, witness? I just couldn't tell him the truth at the time. Mystic Maya. She's your girlfriend, isn't she? I didn't want to be the one to break it to you that I saw her commit murder. There, there. We all understand how difficult this is for you. Now, let's continue with the testimony. What did you witness in the garden? Phoenix isn't saying anything. He's keeping quiet right now. <laughs> well, you're on. No, it's Edgeworth. <laughs> the fandom is very upset. You're saying that the victim attacked Maya. I mean, Miss Faye. Yes, it was a truly frightening scene. Mr. Kamaya was struck hard in the head and it looked like she was going to collapse. What were you doing at the time? Why didn't you stop them from fighting? I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I was... I was frightened. I couldn't move. I couldn't even speak. I was in such shock. That's perfectly understandable, my dear. Doesn't sound right. I don't believe his testimony for a minute. What happened after that? Okay, what was the murder weapon? You moved in to deliver a fatal strike. Yes, I'm sure of it. He threw down her staff and reached into her robe for a weapon. Wait a minute. What was this weapon? It was... some kind of dagger. A dagger, huh? And Elise Donum tried to stab her with this weapon. To kill Miss Faye. Yes, exactly. Ha! You look like I did after I mistakenly took a swig of... Oh, I'm gonna struggle to pronounce this one. Worcester sh Worcester sh sauce. Do you have a problem with that testimony we're hearing from your client, lawyer boy? Do I have a problem with Iris' testimony? Your Honor, I have a small problem with the witness's testimony. You do? But this witness is your own client! Yes, well, nevertheless, that's fine. Witness, let's add your state last statement to the testimony. Yes, sir. Hey, just a moment. It's my job to say that. Listen, Gramps. I won't say it again. Final judgment will be rendered by me. Um, no, that that's not your job, Gato. Okay, now let's continue.
She threw a staff away and pulled a dagger from inside her robe. Right. Um... But if you threw it away, how does the sphere have blood on it? I, I think is maybe the piece of evidence we want here. No. We're gonna have to be very careful with uh, loading and saving for this, just because it seems that like it's even tracked our progress from the last trial. Should we unveil that, like... It's a trick weapon? <laughs> yeah, it's probably a good time to... Sister Iris, there's something strange about your version of events. Huh? Miss Donum throwing her staff away makes no sense at all to me. But all you can do with a staff is hit someone. Naturally, you wouldn't know this, Sister Iris, but... The victim's staff had a special feature about it. As you can see, it's a sword. Ah! If Elise Donum really had wanted to kill Maya Faye, she wouldn't have needed to use a separate dagger. Not when she already had a beautiful blade in her hands already. Well, Sister Iris, what do you have to say? Hi. That was an impressive bit of investigating, Try. I never would have thought there was a sword hidden in that staff. But even so, how should I put this? The long sword is unwieldy and does quite ineffective in close quarters combat. Maybe that's why she chose a dagger over a blade. Well... Anyway, the type of weapon she chose to use isn't what's important. The important thing is that she tried to kill Maya Fey. As long as there's nothing strange about that, there's no problem with her testimony. There is something strange about this whole testimony. Well, Mr. Wright, the prosecution has a point! Very well, Your Honor. The defense will now present evidence to back its argument. Mr. Wright. I have here another piece of evidence that shows that this testimony can't be trusted. Because Miss Elise Donan would never attempt to take the life of Maya Faye. Oh, it's her real identity. <laughs> it's like, Elise Donan would never do this. Because she's Elise Donan. It's a bit funny just presenting it as the evidence, but... Yeah, real name, Misty Faye. <laughs> At least Donum would have never attacked Maya Fey. How can you be so sure? Because the victim's real name was not Elise Donum. Her real name was Misty Fey. Fey! No, not Mystic Misty Fey. Who is this Misty Fey? Is she related to Misty Fey is the master of the Korean channeling technique. She is also the mother of Maya Fey. Are you serious? Is it really true, Mr. Wright? Was Elise Donum actually the great Mystic Misty? There's no doubt about it. It's like Iris had no idea. I can hardly believe it. The idea that she would try to kill her only daughter, one she hadn't seen in 17 years. Perhaps the prosecution can offer some explanation for why she would do such a thing. Order! Order in the court! Upon first hearing the witness's testimony, it seemed natural enough. However, in light of some facts that have just been presented. One, that the victim supposedly threw away his soldier in the fight. And two, that the, that the people battling to the dead were mother and daughter. Despite the facts being believable when taken on their own. When taken together, the entire story seems difficult to believe. Listen, there's nothing in this world that is impossible. Except for one little thing. Me not enjoying my coffee. <laughs> yes, what is this one little impossible thing? Ha! Ah, you still don't get it. You think maybe my beans are under-roasted. But you have no idea, Gramps. Um, could you get to your point? I heard this witness's confession this morning. Just as I had taken the first sip of my eight cup of morning coffee. Oh my god, got him. You're going to ruin your health, my friend! <laughs> anyway, after hearing this woman's confession, and the detective who loves to investigate sent to the scene of the crime. And... He discovered this little beauty. Is that the dagger the witness testified to seeing? Oh no. Obviously, your honor. Do you not notice something else? Now do you mention it? 
If you look closely, there appears to be blood on it. Where did you find that? I didn't see that when I investigated the crime scene. Did you investigate the pine tree at the crime scene? Huh? The pine tree? This dagger was stuck in the backside of the pine tree. When the last blow was struck, and in the violent battle between the two women. This little baby was thrown in the direction of the back of the pine tree. Uh, I guess it's a perspective thing, because they were here? It's a weird angle. <laughs> yeah. Which means, the blood in this dagger belongs to the victim, correct? Ha! What are you even listening, old man? I first heard this confession this morning. Just as I had taken the first sip of my 13th cup of morning coffee. Didn't you say it was your eight just a few minutes ago? I didn't have enough time to get the blood analyzed in such short notice. In any case, the court will accept this dagger as evidence. Furthermore, I ordered that a blood test be performed on it immediately. This is my sweetheart. Make sure you treat her right. Malif, get this piece of evidence to the crime lab for testing immediately. Found behind a tree in the inner temple garden, the blood is being analyzed now. Hmm. Yeah, there's gonna be some kind of revelation around this. Dagger added to the court record. Now then! The testimony we've just heard has numerous unbelievable aspects to it. However, after having found the da very dagger the witness spoke of, I believe we can consider her testimony to be credible. Cute girls never lie. Ever. I... <laughs> oh no. In any case, witness, if you can please testify again to this court. Oh, about what, your honor? About the incident you saw! The battle between the two women! Yes, your honor. Mystic Maya stumbled briefly after being hit over the head with the staff. But then she dodged Mystic Elise's next attack and stole her weapon. Suddenly, Mystic Elise was the one in the defensive, with her back to the stone lantern. That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Mystic Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then... Then she collapsed. Okay, so... The contradiction here is when did she write the name Maya? It seems. That was a very heartbreaking story! I don't know if there were any bad feelings between them, but... It had been 17 years since Mystic Misty's disappearance. Perhaps they simply didn't recognize each other anymore. That seems reasonable! Now, Mr. Wright! Proceed with your cross-examination! Okay, she stumbled briefly. She dodged Mystic Elise's next attack and stole her weapon. Mystic Elise on the defensive with her back to the Stone Lantern. That's when Mystic El Maya stabbed Mystic Elise. Mystic Elise managed to fling the knife away, but then she collapsed. Okay, so... Yeah, if you really saw this, how did you miss that, like, her... Scrawl in the wall with- Oh, do I not have evidence of that? Wait, what? How the fuck is that not a piece of evidence? What? I'm actually amazed that was not taken. The blood scrawled Maya on the lantern, yeah. That's clearly what's missing. Okay, all right. Where did that dagger go? I have no idea. It was dark and I couldn't see. Gordon, the detective who found the dagger. <laughs> it was stuck into the pine tree in the garden. Most likely it was flown towards the tree after the struggle. That's the most likely explanation, yes. After being stabbed in the stomach, did the victim collapse right away? Now that I think of it, she seemed to stare at Mystic Maya for a while. And Mystic Maya stood there, not moving an inch. It felt for a moment like time had just stopped. But then, suddenly, as if the spell had worn off, Mystic Elise fell over. Seems like a reasonable story at first. The one thing that is completely impossible. The very idea of Maya stabbing someone. That alone is impossible, which means... This faulty testimony must contain another contradiction in it somewhere. 
I am surprised genuinely that I d the scrawled Maya on the wall is not a piece of evidence. I I, I feel like... Because <laughs> that's a contradiction you could point out here, but there must be something else that the game's looking for. Hmm. There must be something else. Wouldn't that make it more guilty? But no, but it contradicts the testimony here, because, like, basically... Elise flung the knife away and then collapsed. So, like, why would Maya write her own name in blood on the lantern, you know? It still contradicts the testimony, but clearly there's some kind of utter contradiction. Uh... Okay, Mystic Maya stumbled briefly after being hit over the head with the staff. Crystal Sphere. Then she dodged Mystic Elise's next attack and stole her weapon. What happened to the victim's staff then? I'm not sure. The area was very dark, so I really couldn't see. I think I got knocked away somewhere as the fight escalated. That makes sense! That would explain the need for the dagger! Mr. Galise raised the dagger to strike. Mystic Maya dodged at the last second. The dagger struck the lantern and fell to the ground. And at some point, Mystic Maya picked it up. Doesn't sound especially strange yet. What did the victim do when the weapon was stolen from her? Mystic Galise was on the defensive. That's when Mystic Maya stabbed Mr. Galise. Are you absolutely certain that's what you saw? Yes, I'm almost certain. Almost. The garden was dark. I couldn't really tell who was who. What'd you just say? So in other words, it could have been someone else entirely. Objection. We know that Maya Fey was at the Inner Temple that night. And that the woman who was killed was Elise Donum. Isn't it fairly obvious who attacked who? Boy, Pearls was there! It was Pearls with the knife! No vetting the counter that yet. Well, and witness, please continue with your testimony. Two of them faced each other for a moment. The Mystic Maya rushed straight into Mystic Elise. And Mystic Elise doubled over and fell to the ground. So she was stabbed in the stomach, huh? Yes. Okay, on the defensive. You're saying that Maya Fey turned the tables on the victim. Yes. But Mystic, but Mystic Maya wasn't herself at the time. After all, her life was in danger. Still can't believe it. The idea of Maya cornering someone at knife point is just silly. As they say, a cornered fox is more dangerous than a jackal. I believe the correct description of a cornered fox is scared and petrified. Your animal analogies have grown tiresome. <laughs> You were the one who started it. But anyway, after Meyer Faye backed the victim into the stone lantern, what happened next? Yeah, it says him for like being tired of the, the metaphors. It was hit. Iris, where are you standing when you witness all this? Um, what do you mean? Well, if either of them had noticed you, they might not have continued their battle. I, I wonder if that's true. Two of them, they were standing near the garden stone lantern. I... I was watching the whole thing from behind. It was dark where the two of them were, so... Oh, it shouldn't have been dark, though, because the lanterns were burning, weren't they? Even here, it's kind of showing the snow. That's why they didn't see me. So it was dark in the garden when the murder took place. Tell me what Miss Maya Faye do after she was struck. Do we have the lantern as evidence? No, we don't have that. Um... The master's talisman was found. So I'm wondering if, like, that's the point? Because a lot of the other evidence doesn't really line up or pertain to the garden. You know? Hood doesn't make sense. The weather doesn't make sense. This isn't involved. The staff has already been discredited, unfortunately. Oh, loss of blood from stab in the back still. Is 
Is the autopsy still going to be relevant here? It might be. Her back was to the stone lantern. Um, so on this one, because we know from the autopsy that's how she died. No? Okay. That's when she stabbed him. Maybe on this? On that. Yeah, there we go. Something about you just isn't right today, Iris. Huh? Until now, I didn't think you were the type to make such a careless mistake. However, the testimony you just gave contains quite a few contradictions. What do you mean? What's so wrong about my testimony? According to you. Maya Faye stabbed the victim while she had her back to the stone lantern. Correct? Yes, that's right. But in that case, the victim would have been stabbed in the stomach, right? Yes, I think so. But according to the autopsy report, the cause of death was due to blood loss from a stab wound in her back. Ah. This proves that the victim was stabbed from behind, not from the front. Sister Iris, it appears another seed of doubt has spread from your testimony. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? Ha. It's simple. People are like books. We've all got a front and a back. You get my drift. Oh, is that all you have to say? <laughs> Yeah, everyone's just like, like, God, I really wish you'd stop speaking in riddles. We're all kind of sick of your bullshit. <laughs> I can also say that darkness loves to play with the human mind. Would you please knock it off with the cheesy proverbs and illogical metaphors already? The point is, too much of this testimony just doesn't make sense. Throwing away a useful staff to people fighting, being mother and daughter. And now she falsely claims the victim was stabbed in the stomach. There certainly are some inconsistencies. <laughs> well, Iris, how about it? Well, it's just... If you ask me, you're just being too naive about the whole thing. What do you mean? He's taking his sweet time. There are 253 distinct types of bitterness in coffee. Mr. Gono, could you get to the fucking point, please? But to pick out each one requires total concentration and the use of all senses. Were you really concentrating on what this witness actually said? Prosecutor Gatto, just please fucking explain yourself already! <laughs> the witness was quite unamb um, unambiguous about her own ambiguities when she said that the garden was dark and she couldn't see clearly. A human needs one thing to see clearly, and that is light. Light? By the way, did you know? I swear to God if you give me a fact about coffee. As a cure has a rule that on nights when an acolyte is at the inner temple training. We're in the clear. The stone lantern in the garden must be kept lit. I did wonder what that stone lantern was there for. Well, if that's true. Shouldn't the witness have been able to see the cr crime more clearly? Normally, yes, your honor. But according to the head nun, Sister Bikini, on the night of the crime, it was impossible to light that stone lantern. Impossible? It hadn't been used in a long time, and the wick was no good. In other words, it had to have been nearly pitch black in the garden that night. There could have been a faint light coming from the training hall, but that's all. Most enlightening! Yes, that illuminating fact has chased all the contradictions away. Actually, no, Kato, it's kind of exposed more of them, if anything, because now Iris clearly couldn't have seen most of what happened. Testimony's horribly unreliable. Like, you've contradicted yourself. Uh, if the staff was dropped, it would be difficult to see. It also explains why she, they didn't recognize each other. We can't see the demons that lurk in the night. That's why humans are weak. Isn't that right, Trite? <laughs> I'm amazed this... Like, he, he hasn't actually shown anything. Order, order! Here, Your Honor. Let me present the stone lantern into evidence. Maybe it will rekindle the flame of truth in your mind. Okay, it's nice that we're actually going to have this now with the Maya text. The lantern for the inner temple garden was not lit the night of the crime. 
Game was waiting to give that context. Why is the judge just sitting there with that look on, the, on his face? What's wrong, Your Honor? Was that flame too hot? This lantern! There's something written on it! Why? It's written in blood! The judge didn't know about that yet. Written in blood. Oh, because he, he can't see red because of his poor eyesight and the visor, can he? Yeah, he's having some trouble here. It says! It says Maya upside down! What the? Oh yes, that's right. After being courted and stabbed by Mystic Maya, Mystic Elise didn't fall down right away. She must have been writing that in the stone lantern behind her. With the blood that was draining out of her body. It certainly looks that way. Hang on. Hang on just a minute. What are you all talking about? What do you mean, what are we all th talking about? I'm talking about the message written in blood. Hmm. <laughs> Nonsense. This lantern. It's as clean as a whistle. Could it be? He can't see the bloody writing at all. Now that I think of it, he did say something to me yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. So that's what he meant by that. In any case, this is obviously an important clue. We now know that the crime scene was dark. And that the victim scrawled this message on the stone lantern. Well, Mr. Gatto, anything further? Mr. Gatto! Uh, um, okay, then. Let's move on. Gatto was literally shaken, and somehow I don't think it's from caffeine overdose. Yeah, he's reacting quite strongly to the, the blood. Might make his case fall apart in some capacity. Yeah, this is like an overlooked detail that's going to prove something against him. I believe it has now been established. And Miss Donum was killed by Maya Faye. That's just wrong. Now it's time to turn our attention to you. Yes, sir. After the victim died, you did something, didn't you? Let's hear it. We're all ears. Okay, Sister Iris' cover-up. After Mystic Elise died, I called out to Mystic Maya. I thought it was my duty to protect the future master of the Korean tradition. So I removed the body from the inner temple by myself. I dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. Then I used the snowmobile to carry it to ha back to Hasakura Temple and... I used the Shichishito to alter the way the wound looked. Okay, but this doesn't a address the fact that the body was bruised. Yep. So you moved the body? Yes, I was raised at Hasakura Temple. I owe a great deal of thanks to the Fey Clan. But even so, I never imagined. That at least Donum was actually Misty Fey. I've... I've committed a terrible sin. Terrible trick of fate! I believe you're looking for twist of fate, your honor. I intended to return to the Inner Temple after taking care of the body, but... You were spotted by the head nun, correct? Yes, and that's why I couldn't go back. Your story makes sense, I suppose. Mr. Wright, go ahead with your cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so it's, I mean... Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this is the logic the game is looking for here. I called out. I moved, removed the body from the inner temple. Dragged it behind me all the way across Dusky Bridge. I used the snow wheel to carry it back. I used the Shichi Shito to alter the way... Alter the way the wound looked. Um, at what point did it fall then? Because the autopsy is very clear on that. Body fell 10 feet after that? No. No, I'm surprised the autopsy isn't showing this, because there is a contradiction. Uh, maybe I have to press this and it's going to give me an updated statement like nothing else happened. Is that what you were doing when Sister Bikini saw you? Yes, that's right. You probably thought the worst. 
Probably, more like de definitely. Hmm, I see. Sister Bikini mistakenly thought you were the one that murdered Miss Donum. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. It's my fault that this case has gotten so confusing. I don't want to believe it, but I don't think my logic is failing me. Iris is trying to pin the murder on Maya. Why would she do want to do that? There's only one reason I can think of. Okay. Uh, I mean... <sighs> I don't know if the letter is going to come into play here. Maybe this can kind of reveal a bit of motivation to pin it on Maya? Nope. So then, you knew. You knew the significance of the name Maya Faye. Yes, of course I did. That's odd. I mean, Sister Bikini didn't recognize Maya's name, let alone her position. Anyway, she was an, a very special person indeed. I moved the body by myself. Why'd you do that? Because I didn't want Mystic Maya to be suspected in any way. I thought the best thing would be to remove the body from the crime scene. You moved her body all by yourself? Yes, I did. It would have been impossible if it wasn't for the snow. Snow, huh? I dragged it behind me all the way to Dusky Bridge. Oh, it stopped snowing. Um, yeah, surely there would be like some kind of mark. What a report? No. I use the snowmobile to carry it back to Hazakura Temple, and I use the Shichishito to alter the way the wound looked. There's a few trains of thought here. I dragged it all the way behind me. Maybe the picture of the tracks? No? Quick help me out, chat. I'm not missing a press here, am I? I don't think I am. I think I've got the evidence I need already. I am missing a press. Okay. Alright. Let's, um... Uh... Okay. Oh, I would have thought there was enough there. Okay. We'll press here. So you wait until everything was over before making a move. No, it's not like that. She saw someone murdered right in front of her eyes. Not surprising that she was a little timid. Yes, I suppose that's true. Sometimes when I'm watching lawyers argue back and forth with each other, I feel so helpless that I just quiet, sit quietly and wait for them to reach a conclusion. How did you get this job, Your Honor? Isn't it your job as the judge to mediate the argument? It wasn't until Mystic Maya saw me that it finally dawned on her what, what she had done. So then you knew. Oh, we pressed that one before. I removed the body, we pressed that one. We pressed that one too, yeah? Quick help me out, chat there. We pressed those two. Yep. Snowmobile. I knew that, she would, that that would show up sooner or later. Yes, I had the key. I used the snowmobile to travel from Hazakura Temple to Dusky Bridge. This is the part that was in question the other day. I asked for more details. Uh, ooh, yeah, okay, so this this is gonna be the press bit then. But the tracks. If you really did move her, her body by snowmobile, then there should be tracks left in the snow, right? Well, yes, naturally you'd expect tracks! This picture was presented at yesterday's trial. Are these the tracks from that ride? Yes, I think they are. But I can only see one set of tracks here. I don't see what's so strange about that. Snow was still far when I last has left Hazakura Temple. I see! Snow was still falling, huh? And then when the murder took place, it had already stopped. That's why there are such fresh-looking tracks. How about it, Mr. Wright? What do you think about this testimony? 
Yeah, it's important. When the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Doesn't make sense if you stack it up against the other evidence. Your Honor, I like the statement I was just made added to the testimony. But does it have something to do with the case? No, just for funsies, Your Honor. What do you think? I'll be very clear if you allow her statement to be added to the record. Ha! Ah, this should be fun. You. Let's get this snow business cleared up, shall we? Yes, sir. By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. There have been a lot of contradictions in your testimony so far. This time, are you sure it's all true? Yes, I am. When the murder happened, the snow had already stopped. According to you, that's why the snowmobile tracks were so clear. That's right, I'm certain of it. I think I've trapped her this time. I see how you think. Snow, huh? What is going on here? If the snow really had stopped by the time of the murder, it'd mean there's a bigger hole in her story than that movie, The Great Revelations. <laughs> what? I'm sorry? <laughs> What's that supposed to be referencing? It's a reference to The Matrix? A weird bit of shade just to cast out in the blue. Oh, <laughs> okay. All right. Phoenix hates that movie, apparently. <laughs> what? God, that's random. <laughs> ha. Well, Mr. Trite, perhaps you'd like to share your theory with us. Let's see what you, what's up your sleeve. A ratter at the end of your index finger. Don't want to believe it, but I don't think my logic is failing me. I was trying to pin the murder. Okay. <laughs> what a weird reference. <laughs> uh, by the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Um, weather report? Nope. Uh, wait, wait, which one is it for the snow again? There's like... I'm, I'm always confused by the snow reports. Uh, just because we had to prove it like three times yesterday. <laughs> so I'm just like kind of going back through all the evidence. No? Oh, this was covered in snow. No? Which one is it? That wasn't covered in snow. I've been confused by the snow because, uh, like, we had like Francisca made such a big deal about it before. Not the wider data. Just the autopsy report? No. This is one of these pieces of evidence. We'll get it. <sighs> yeah, let's have a look. Not the magazine. Temple map doesn't make sense. Gravy scroll doesn't make sense. Photo doesn't make sense. Iris hood doesn't make sense. It's not the weather report. Wasn't the Shichishito. Victim staff doesn't really make sense. This is autopsy, it's not that one. It's not the tracks. It's not the crime photo. I don't think it's Larry's sketch. Crystal sphere. It's not the talisman. Burnt ladder doesn't have anything to do with this right now. Lantern? I don't know.
A quick help me out chat. Do I need to press a different statement with the snowmobile? It, it, it might be that. I don't see actually how it, it's with the snow. Yeah, I think I need to press this. No, I don't. Oh, okay. Um... By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. Is it a profile? Doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense. Did did Edgeworth mention the weather at some point? <laughs> Franziska. <laughs> I'm a little bit stumped on this one, honestly. I didn't try the dagger yet. No? It's not the attorney's badge. Um, I'm not seeing this one. Okay, help me out, chat. Is it a profile? No, it's not. Okay. Uh, I thought it wasn't. I keep thinking it's the autopsy report. I had the logic right. I presented it there. Okay, another help me out chat. Am I on the wrong statement? I thought this was gonna be it. Yeah, I am. Okay, right, that, that's just not relevant then. Is that what you were doing when Sister Bikini saw you? Yes, that's right. She probably thought the worst. Probably more like definitely. Oh, I see! Sister Bikini mistakenly thought you were the one that murdered Miss Donum! So sorry. Please forgive me. It's my fault that this case has gotten so confusing. I've pressed everything, have I not? I'm pretty sure I have. I'm pretty sure I pressed it all. Help me out, chat. I have pressed everything, yes? Yeah. Yeah, I have. And another help me out, chat. It's not this statement, the one that we revealed. It's not this. No, it's not. <laughs> I'm really confused. I don't I don't see it. I It's not that statement and I've pressed everything. I, I don't know what it is. I press this one? Oh yeah, I just pressed that one there. It's not a profile either. I... Okay, help me out, chat. Which statement is it? The fourth one. One, two, three. 
four. This one. We press that one. Pretty amazing that you could drag it. It's worse than it is, it's surprisingly sturdy despite its age. We did press this, didn't we? It's like they say, idiots are too stumped to catch even a simple cold. But it's one other thing that bothers me. Why not just throw the body into the Eagle River? It would have been much easier than dragging it all the way to Hazakura Temple. I thought that it would still catch, cast too much suspicion on the Mystic Maya. So I tried to make the, take the body as far away as possible. Ha! Makes perfect sense to me. For the time being. Anyway, what'd you do after you crossed the bridge? Um... I dragged it all the way across the bridge. Okay, well, I mean, we can we can try some of our previous statements here, then. Uh, the snow tracks is one of the ones. No? I'm really not seeing this one. But... Try and test it. Use object. On each of them. I was found at the bridge. Is the bridge already on fire? No? Talisman was left behind. No? No, we're just gonna trial and error everything. I I really do not see this one. Uh, I'm curious what the game is gonna say. The map? Nope. Point and click adventure game it. It's it's not that. Weather here. Okay. Oh, so if the snow had stopped because the lightning struck. Okay, right. Now I get it. So it is the weather. Okay. Claim the snow had already stopped when the murder occurred. I'm sorry, Iris. That just isn't possible. This is the weather data from the night of the murder. According to this, the snow didn't stop until 10.50pm. But you couldn't have crossed Dusky Bridge that time. Why do you say that? Because five minutes before the snow stopped. Dusky Bridge was st struck by lightning and it caught on fire. What'd you say? The bridge. It was on fire. You don't mean to say! You didn't know about it! It's because of that lightning strike that the bridge burned down! What? But it can't... it can't be. It looks like you still haven't figured it out. No matter how hard you try to deceive or conceal the truth. You can't pull the why... The you can't pull the wool over the eyes of a real defense attorney. No! No order, order! The bridge was already on fire when the incident took place. That's right, the inner temple was already totally cut off from the outside world. There's no way you could have crossed the bridge, body or nobody. Kano's gonna come in as like, well, clearly she swung across like fucking Tarzan. Witness, even my patience has its limits! Any further line, I will find you in contempt of court! You've anything to say for yourself! Objection. The only person here that is truly contemptible is you. Old man. Me? How dare you! Whether this witness lied or not doesn't mean squat right now. Squat? The important thing now is to find out the truth. Isn't that right? Yes, of course, but... Whether it was snowing or not snowing, or whether the bridge was burning or not, there are two facts that can't be disputed. First, the body of Elise Donum was discovered in the Hazakura Temple Courtyard. And second, the head nun, Sister Bikini, witnessed Iris desecrating Elise Donum's body. Makes a good point on both accounts. That's right. I'm not lying. What are you claiming this time? I wasn't myself at all that night. So my memory is still somewhat hazy. 
You've stood at that witness stand and testified this entire time. Are you telling us now that your memory of that night is hazy? <laughs> it's only human to err. If you're so perfect, try it. Maybe you can explain this for the court. What is it? When the murder happened, the bridge had already burnt down. But somehow the body traveled across the bridge and was found in the temple courtyard. Perhaps you have some kind of perfect explanation for this little magic trick. Well, not exactly, no. I know there must be some other way she got across that burnt out bridge. Unless I can somehow demonstrate it will never know the truth. Looks like the defense is not prepared to offer a suitable explanation. See what I mean. In other words, you're in no position to suggest that this lady's testimony isn't the truth. All right then, witness, let's hear your testimony once more. Like, there's no way she could have done it. It's like, she, I mean, there's a lie here somewhere. Like, she was killed earlier. Surely. About what, Your Honor? You've admitted that you moved the victim's body. Nevertheless, your prior testimony contained a rather large inconsistency. Please add an explanation for that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. Will this be your final testimony? No, we got at least four more, Phoenix. Got at least four. <laughs> Other than walking over the bridge, there's no way to move the body. So I must have just gotten confused, I guess. Was the snow still falling or had it stopped? Does it really matter that much? Were well, you saying that there is no way to cross a burning bridge? It was just a misunderstanding, I see! This is a photo of Dusky Bridge after it burned down from the lightning blast. It was taken on the morning after the incident. Certainly was burned to a crisp, and one of the suspension wires even snapped. Amazing the whole bridge didn't fall apart. We spotted that snapped suspension wire earlier. Clearly, it would be impossible to carry a corpse across the bridge in this condition. But what if she's just lying, Your Honor, and like she did it earlier? <laughs> Unless I do something to discredit this testimony, it's going to be deemed as the truth. And Maya will be accused of murder. Trite. I'm only going to say it one more time. It is only human to err. And only humans can spot the errors of our ways. The more sense he makes, the less sense he makes. Alright, Mr. Wright, please begin your final cross-examination. Okay, ha so we're just accepting it as fact then that she's not lying. There's no way to move the body. <laughs> there is a way to cross a burning bridge. It's a weird testimony she's given here. Yes, but snow had already stopped when the incident took place. I couldn't have crossed the bridge, naturally. But I think it's just like Mr. Gatto said. Body did make it across somehow. I must have just gotten confused. But you seem to be quite sure of yourself when you gave your testimony. You said you were sure the snow had already stopped. I'm terribly sorry I was wrong. <laughs> well, no, no problems here, Your Honor. This is a j no joke. You're given sworn testimony in a court of law. Well, Mr. Wright, let me ask you a question. You remember what the weather was like one week ago today? Huh? Well, I... Naturally, it was, um... You see, it's not that easy to remember, is it? But if it had been some kind of a special day, I would have remembered. For example, it was pouring rain on the day of my elementary school graduation. No one wants to hear about your childhood traumas, Trite. <laughs> Only I get to speak about my own personal trauma and badger you with it. <laughs> By the time the murder took place, the snow had already stopped. If you insist on in obsessing over that, that, that one statement, let's see the proof. Show some evidence that the body somehow crossed the bridge while it was on fire. 
Oh no, it's not gonna... <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no, we're not entertaining like the powers of flight again in this courtroom, are we? Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, please. No! <laughs> oh, here we fucking go. <laughs> a dead body flying over a burning bridge. I wouldn't exactly rule out the possibility. <laughs> what? <laughs> ha! You're saying it's possible. Don't make me laugh. The only thing that's possible about your claim is that it's been pulled out of thin air. Uh, Cory, no, thank you for five gift subs earlier. Uh, Skook, thank you for a thousand bits there. Thank you very much. I don't know about that. In any case, we have a witness who did see it happen. <laughs> the body flew, you're on it. We're on, like, the receiving end of Big Top at the moment. Who is it? Who is this witness? Can't check it out here. I've got to keep on the attack and go, go, go. Miss Elise Stoneham's brilliant and highly gifted apprentice. Larry Stoneham. Brilliant? Highly gifted. Apprentice. Remember what he said in his testimony. That night he was at the, at the mountain shack, Heavenly Hall. And that's when he witnessed the event. I think you've all seen this sketch before. It's an exact drawing of what he witnessed that night. Are you serious? Today's not April Fool's Day, is it? <laughs> Mr. Wright, are you seriously claiming that the victim flew through the air? And you're using this pathetic scribble to support your argument? <laughs> Uh-oh. The judge looks like he's about to blow a gasket. <laughs> ha. Well, Trite, there's nowhere for you to hide now. Other than looking like it was drawn by a six-year-old. Does this sketch prove anything? Yes, I'm pretty sure it does, and I'm going to prove it. Okay, go on, Phoenix, you got the floor here. <laughs> Listen, I know your tricks. You're trying to turn this whole thing upside down. If you're so eager to turn this case upside down, why not start with the sketch? Upside down, why did Gato say that? Wait, is the Tron fucking upside down? No, because the, the support bridge- no, the beams are there. Alright then, let's hear the defense's theory! What exactly is this sketch trying to show? Here we go, alright. I don't think old Whiskerface is gonna forgive any more mistakes. Alright, Phoenix, look carefully and think it over. The sketch drawn by Larise Donum is evidence of nothing, a complete contradiction. Exactly what happened? Of course, the victim was flying through the air. You can see it right there in the sketch. Whoosh! <laughs> you know, you're starting to remind me of yesterday's witness. What? That's the last thing I want to hear. Do you have any evidence that the victim flew through the air? Just so you know, we haven't discovered a giant human catapult at the inner temple yet. <laughs> I wish they had. Even if you're a lousy lawyer, at least you're one cup's worth of entertainment. I think we should skip the penalty this time. There must be some way, I just know it. There must be a way to use Larry's sketch to show the truth of what happened. Alright then, the witness will now return to her testimony. Yes, your honor. Wait. Okay, wait, wait. Actually, okay, hang on. Wait. Wait, what? No, do I have to do all that again? Reload.
It's not exactly what happened. It's not evidence of nothing, a complete contradiction. Something is obviously funny about this sketch. I'm no art critic, but even I can see that. No, no, that's not what I mean, Your Honor. Marie Stodham stated it over and over. This sketch was exactly as he saw it. However, if we're to believe his test of... Okay, no, so Larry was upside down. Wait, wait, so what, what exactly were you looking at? Body below the bridge kind of makes a bit more sense. Uh, these supports? I thought the supports for the bridge were on top of it. Maybe they just came loose in the fire. Right. Then the sketch contradicts reality as we know it. it contradicts reality. Ha. Ah, this is getting interesting. Do we have a photo of the bridge? Is that... Are they under it? I thought they were above it. Just suspension bri bridge design. It's normally above, isn't it? Do we have another picture? Where's my picture? Oh, yeah, here. Okay. No, yeah, they... Right, they are under it. Right, okay. Yeah, I was just thinking of these ones here. Yeah, okay, there's like a bit of extra support or something going on here. Is that not just like a slack rope? I'm not trying to like, uh, I, I'm not being like contrarian or anything. Honestly, here, like, I'm just kind of curious as to how it is actually working. From like a physics standpoint, <laughs> like, help me out chat here. Yeah, I'm just trying to actually understand how the bridge is being supported. Like, what do these cables actually do? <laughs> or is it just that like, it's burnt down a bit, so like that cable's fallen? It's just support and tension. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm just trying to understand, yeah, what, what that actually is. Yeah, I guess that makes sense where the stones were, or the, the supports were placed. This one came loose. Okay. Ha! This is getting interesting. I'm loving the architecture lesson happening right now. Looks like you're back to that finger pointing thing again. Okay, try. So what exactly contradicts reality as we know it? Uh, it, so it would have to be the beam. If this, it's this wire connected to the bridge. The wire? Ha! Ah. Is that the thing that contradicts reality? It is indeed. It show us the reality it supposedly conflicts with. Show us something that will point out how the sketch contradicts reality. Okay. Dusky bridge photo. That's a photo of Dusky Bridge, correct? Yes, now compare the sketch and the photo for a minute. In the sketch, the wires appear to be above the guard wires. On the actual Dusky Bridge. Jumping! <laughs> Wait! Jehoshaphat? <laughs> what the fuck? What is a Jehoshaphat? <laughs> Bulletin backpacks, radioactive man. Jehoshaphat <laughs> was the son of Azza and the fourth king of the kingdom of Judah. <laughs> okay. Weird connection, uh, but all right. <laughs> The wires are below the guard wires. <laughs> order, order! This sketch is somewhat different than what's depicted in the photo. However, isn't it likely that the artist just saw it wrong? Perhaps he just drew it wrong. Either way, it sounds like you're just wrong. Hang on one sec. With someone like Larice, I admit a mistake is definitely a, poss a definite possibility. But then that begs the question. Why did he make a mistake? What was the reason? Are you saying you know the answer to that? Listen, think back, all right? Remember what Larice was doing when he witnessed this event. He was at Heavenly Hall waiting for a lover that was never going to come. He waited and waited and finally he laid down. But then, lightning shoots from the sky and sets the bridge aflame. 
I ponder what sort of position Larice must have been in at the time. He was lying on his back, which is why he remembered the scene the way he did. I mean, I guess... <laughs> he was lying on his back! I can't see how it relates! But it does, Your Honor. It's honestly, like, more likely to just explain this by, like, the notepads upside down. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's the reason why the wires in the sketch go up instead of down. <laughs> ah! No way. <laughs> Larice Dodon witnessed the event while he was lying on his back, face up. In other words, the scene that he saw was actually upside down. <laughs> so then, this sketch should actually... I think you'll finally get, you finally get it, Your Honor. The correct way to view Larice Dodon's sketch is like this. This is how it should actually look. The victim's body wasn't flying above the bridge. It was actually swinging below. <laughs> That's right, just like a pendulum, but... Did they... Oh no, they actually fucking Tarzan swung it across, did they? What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what? Why isn't she just lying? <laughs> of all the things to say, a pendulum. The bridge was burned to a crisp. There was no way to get across it. But if the body had been at the inner temple, it would have caused problems. This is where the criminal decided to take a gamble. Like, really? Like, on a burning bridge too? Like, like, the odds of that even making it across are so astronomically low. <laughs> like, Jesus, you know? They used the burning bridge to get the body across to the other side. And a pendulum was the only way to get it done. Objection. Let's think about this for a minute, shall we? The dusky bridge is about 20 yards long, which means it's about that far from the inner temple to the opposite cliff. Yes, that sounds right. In order to cover that distance with a pendulum, you need a rope at least 10 yards long. To get a rope that long, you'd have to plan ahead. Lightning strike that that night can only have been an accident, so it doesn't make sense that the culprit would have prepared the rope beforehand. So then, they didn't have to get the rope ready. The rope was already right in front of them. What? I'm saying that it was just a matter of using what was already there. Wait, actually, okay, question, actually, yeah. If the body swings across by a fucking rope, is the opposite cliff lower? Because if you swing it, it's not gonna make it up to the top. <laughs> okay, all right, give it a moment. In that case, Mr. Wright, please give us an explanation to support your theory. What makes you think the criminal had the rope on hand to create a pendulum? It's the photo of the bridge. And the meaning of this is, if you want to know where the rope came from, it's hanging right there in front of your glorious beard. Ah! This! This is one of the wires from the bridge! But the lightning struck the bridge and set it on fire. One of the suspension wires came loose from its anchor. The criminal didn't have any time to waste. So they tied the wire around Elise Stoneham's body. <laughs> oh my! What? Because there was simply no other way to move the body. But... That was like, barely held on. Like, this like... One to ten million odds or something. Like, Jesus. <laughs> How? How does that work? It, it swung all the way up to the top. Yeah, uh, that's actual big top physics in effect. Oh no. Physics make no sense here. Yeah, no shit.
Two things you have to accept for playing Phoenix Wright games. One, that perjury doesn't exist, and two, uh, our entire fundamental understanding of physics. <laughs> Why is this not possible? Do you want to try it? <laughs> you want to see how that goes? <laughs> ha! Oh, there he goes. He's chugging his coffee. Yeah, he's, he's, he's taking a lot of copium. He's gonna need it. <laughs> Mr. Grotto! It seems that Mr. Grotto is more focused on his coffee than answering my question. It seems that the odds of a rope being readily available are very high. So I suppose it's not an impossibility after all. Possible or impossible? That's not the question we need to ask. There's only one question. Did that really happen? Trite. I wonder if you can prove what happened to us. Do you have any actual evidence that the body was swung over like a pendulum? <laughs> I don't know, Gato. Let's have a look. Oh no, because the body fell. <laughs> oh, this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> Before I present my evidence, let me review what we know so far. According to this photo, one of the wires snapped. Looking at the map, we can see it's, it was the one that was in front of the inner temple. So then that was the spot with the criminal! Yes, precisely. <laughs> now let us consider the body's movement by looking at the overhead map again. If the body was pushed from this point here... It would drop in the opposite bank at approximately this point. <sighs> Did you say drop? Well, they must have failed to catch the body on the other bank. What, what makes you think something like that happened? Because I have evidence that suggests her body dropped some distance. What kind of evidence? Take a look at this autopsy report. It says here her body fell about 10 feet after her death. 10 feet, huh? Most likely the height difference between the two sides. The body overswung due to forward momentum, but then it came loose and fell about 10 feet. I think the real question of the physics here, right, is the specific knot you're gonna have to tie the body with to securely hold it at, like, the this, this fastest point of the swing and then to accurately let go of the body at the opposite end. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> Boy Scouts. <laughs> Yeah, Iris is gonna reveal she went to camp, like, for five years. The rope was also on fire during this time. Let's not forget that, yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> this is like... This is straight up, like, one to ten million odds that this would have worked. <laughs> no joke. Like... <laughs> it's so stupid. Ah. Uh. If physics works out, if the cliff was the same height and tension was maintained, it would reach the same height, it was dropped from- Yeah, but the bridge was literally on fire! And the the rope let go of the body! <laughs> and then as a result, the land and impact. This crystal sphere was knocked loose. That's... Yes, this bloodstained amethyst crystal. It's the one that came off of Mr. Elise Stoneham's staff. And even more important is the place where this crystal sphere was found. Indeed, I believe it's already marked in this overhead map. The crystal was found. Ah! Precisely, Your Honor. In the very spot where the pendulum would arrive given the right amount of speed. Wait! So she was flung over with her staff as well! <laughs> oh yeah, because I- No, because the staff was still inside her this entire time! <laughs> How is this tied? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Boy Scouts. 
This explains your theory quite well, Mr. Wright. I think you got a real case for fucking Mythbusters here. <laughs> you have provided us with the way the body could have been moved that night. An impressive deduction, Mr. Wright. Most impressive. <laughs> fucking conspiracy theory levels. I thought this cold coffee might help cool you down. What is the meaning of this, Mr. Gatto? We deserve that coffee. <laughs> that was a dark and bitter guess that you made, Trite. You forgot about one thing. Oh, what would that be? The aroma. Huh? The coffee's most reliable accomplice is this deep and profound aroma. The rest of the court doesn't speak coffee needs. Could you elaborate a bit more? If the criminal had sent the body to the other side, like you say. But naturally. It must have been an accomplice lying in wait to catch it. An accomplice? The criminal wasn't able to cross Dusky Bridge. So, who collected the body? What do you have to say about that, Trite? Mr. Gatto was correct. This can't be the work of a single person. Well, Mr. Wright, you know what you must do. Yes, Your Honor. The body couldn't have made it to Hazakura Temple without an accomplice. Very well, then, if you please, Mr. Wright. Who was the person that received the body on the Hasakura Temple side? Um. Okay, it's not Maya. Me is dead. It. I don't think Pearl could have possibly collected this. Like, Gato's Gato's here. It couldn't have been Gumshoe. Bikini. Uh, Iris claims she was at the temple. No, so Iris must have been at this side. Hang on, there's a lot of noise all of a sudden. Sorry, let me just close the windows real quick. Okay. I don't think Larry would collect the body. Francisca doesn't have a motivation. Morgan Fay's in prison. Like, Bikini? No, but it wouldn't have been. Why would Bikini collect the fucking body? Where's Don Tigre when you need him? Okay, no, it had to have been I. No, but Iris was the one who tied it at the other end. What? Okay, Prosper in jail, actually dead. Probably not Edgeworth. Couldn't have been Francisca. It doesn't make sense if it's Larry. It can't have been Iris. She's dead. Bikini wouldn't have done it. Oh. Process of elimination. What? Well, Mr. Gatto, I'm sure you have something to say. That aroma just now. It smelled of sulfur. Perhaps it was your chances of winning rotten away. Uh, just hang on one sec, guys. We're gonna take a quick break. Just one sec. Sorry.
Sorry guys, just a bit abrupt. We're just gonna take a quick break, if that's okay. I'm just gonna use the loo in that. Sorry, I had to check something there. I'll be right back. Just give me two minutes, okay? Sorry about this. Sorry about that, guys. Oh, I'm back now. Sorry, thanks for bearing with me there. Just, I just have to check on something. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good. No, don't worry. Don't worry. It's all good. Okay, are people debating bridge physics? I, I mean, I, if it does actually work out with the physics, then it's like, okay, fair enough. But like, I'll be honest, it, it seems like a fucking stretch. The thing that concerns me the most with that bridge is specifically that like. The, the body, they had to let go of the body at the other end, and also the body is, like, impaled this entire time, and somehow that was maintained, you know? It, it's a bit of a stretch. <laughs> it does work with physics. It's a case of very unlikely, but not impossible. Okay. It does seem, I mean, it's just insane. Also, the bridge was on fire. We have to actually remember that, too. The bridge was literally on fire the entire time. People use this exact technique to cross chasms in real life. What, they take the bridge support off and swing across like fucking Tarzan? <laughs> you sure about that? Yeah, you don't? Ah. Uh. Okay, it smelled of sulfur. Perhaps it was your chances of winning rotten away. Can't get my facts all mixed up like this. After the accomplice received the body, they carried it to the Hazakura Temple. Then they altered it by using the Shichishito. There's only one person it can be. Mr. Wright, please don't stare at me like that, it's creepy! Very well, and if you please, Mr. Wright. Okay, so... Alright, it's not... Gato, I got. Who is the person that received the body on the Hazakura Temple side? It has to be Iris? It can only be you, Sister Iris. Huh? Ah, but I... I... I don't see why you're so surprised. The only way to transport the body from Dusky Ridge is by snowmobile. With her bad back, Sister Bikini can never pick up a body like that. You're the only one that could have managed it. Yeah, but... But that means who did the murder in the inner temple? Objection. Right, were you even listening to the witness's testimony? On the night of the crime, this little cutie pie was on cleanup duty in the inner temple garden after the mother-daughter bloodbath. I haven't forgotten, but of you, Mr. Gatto. This witness was also seen at Hazakura Temple. Desecrating the corpse of the victim. Strange indeed! It's almost as if... On that night, the defendant was in two different places at the same time! Sister Iris, let me ask you something. Why didn't you mention it when you first gave your testimony? Mention what? The pendulum, of course. Of course, she swung across! As well! Do 
Using this sketch drawn by an eyewitness, I have established how the body was moved during the burnt out bridge. It means now a fact that this occurred. Something you should have already known. No. I, I had no idea. I didn't know anything about a pendulum. The body couldn't have been passed along to the other side without your help. So you should have known about it. In fact, it'd be impossible for you to be clueless about this whole thing. Unless you're not really Iris to begin with. What? What? How can you say that, Mr. Wright? What kind of nonsense is this? You, you're saying this witness isn't Iris of Hazakura Temple? Oh no, did Dahlia send her sister to die? Are you serious, Tri? You, you mean... This woman is... There's no one besides Iris that could have received the corpse that night. Now I get it, now I know I've been sick to my stomach this whole trial. Why her whole demeanor changed so suddenly from yesterday. Why she's trying to pin this murder on Maya. The woman that's standing there at the witness stand. Her real name is... Don Tigre! Oh, I don't get the save here. I never thought I'd have to utter your name again. Let alone see you. It's been a long time. Dahlia Hawthorne. Hawthorne? Sister Iris had a twin sister. And you're looking at her. Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. That name rings some bells. Distant bells, but bells nonetheless. Ha! It's just your imagination, Gramps. This file contains all the relevant data about Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh yes, I remember now. A case. Five years ago. My name is Dahlia Hawthorne. So, yeah, this is like the Eeny Miny sisters again. I'm surprised that this is actually Dahlia, though, after all this time. We worked out that she had a sister fairly on, early on, because well, she just seemed really different. But no, they're actually going the full route that this is Dahlia. I just want to say it's an honor for me to be here in your noble presence. The honor is all my all fucking pain. But, according to this, Dahlia Hawthorne is already dead! It says her execution was carried out last month! So what? Uh, that has no meaning in this courtroom. What? Order, order! Wait a moment. How can you? My sister, she's already dead. What kind of... You of all people should already understand. After all, the blood of the master of the Karain channeling technique flows within that body. The Karain channeling technique? Where have I heard that? That's right. You're not Dahlia Hawthorne herself. You're the spirit of Dahlia, currently inhabiting the body of a spirit medium. Oh, okay. So, no. Dahlia is dead? Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. It's kind of like how Maya transforms into Mia. Now she's doing it. Okay. So, Dahlia is dead. Oh, shit. What an exciting story. Exciting, but quite impossible. You're asking us to buy a Dahlia Hawthorne and just happened to be channeled by someone. On the very night of the murder. To a temple where her twin sister Iris was. Well, if you're going to put things that way, then... Yes. We're supposed to believe a coincidence like that just happens. Naturally, it was no coincidence. The whole thing was part of a plan from the very beginning. It's all written right here in these instructions. Ah, what's this? These instructions were written by your mother, Morgan Fay. And part of the plan called for Dahlia Hawthorne to be channeled. That night, there were two irises at Hazakura Temple. Two of them. <laughs> Even the time of the channel was planned out. As soon as you hear the lights out bell. In other words, 10 p.m. However, Iris was seen before dinner time. That means the Iris that was at dinner was the real Iris. The iris that gave me this ho hood in the main hall was also the real iris. 
I mean that the Iris sister bikini saw at the inner temple was someone else dressed as her. Namely, one Dahlia Hawthorne. Do you even know what you're saying, Trite? This whole channel in the spirit of D Dahlia Hawthorne business. Yes, it's true that you found plans that talk about it. However, there's only one thing that's perfectly clear. The witness currently standing in the witness stand is the real Iris. What? Calm down and remember what you know about the night of the crime. After meeting Sister Bikini, the Dahlia Hawthorne that had been channeled would have been stranded at the Inner Temple due to the lightning strike. <laughs> there she fucking goes! <laughs> it was later that the body was moved by Pendulum. <laughs> That's right! Naturally, that would mean that the iris that received the body was the real iris. Are you with me so far? Yes. After being notified of what happened, the police came to Hazakura Temple's main hall. There, they found Iris in her room and arrested her. And ever since, she's been under police supervision at the detention center. So, like, th there's no way that she was at the inner temple, then. I mean, that's what I I think? She received the body. We don't know... The only thing proven that she's at the inner temple at this point is her testimony? She snuck back at some point? I... Yes, I suppose. Can't deny any of that. Ooh, thank goodness. <laughs> I was really worried for a moment there. It looks like he's finally convinced. Something still seems off. Way off. Still not convinced that the iris here is the same one from the other night. Ha! I suppose you're about to say something really ridiculous. Like the real iris and the spirit of Dahlia. Somehow switched places. Switch places? To be perfectly honest, there are still quite a few things I don't understand, but I do know that unless we confirm the witness's identity, we can't continue with this trial. Iris doesn't have the spiritual power needed to channel Dahlia, which means they must have switched places somehow. I mean, Misty Fade channel Dahlia, but why? It's still very confusing. Well, Mr. Wright, since the time she was arrested at, at Hazakura Temple. Let me just quickly save it here, Your Honor. Have there been any ch chances for Iris to switch places with Dahlia Hawthorne? Um, was there? Your Honor, I think there might have been one chance. Oh, explain yourself! Yesterday, for a few minutes, Iris' whereabouts were unknown. Oh, yeah, true! That's when the locks appeared. Unknown? What do you mean? What I mean is, there was a span of time in which Iris was able to move about freely, unsupervised. Well, who was it? Who would give a murder suspect time to move about freely like that? I'm sorry, I know you didn't mean to. It wasn't your fault. The person who the person who gave Iris the chance to move freely move about was oh I'm sorry Edward I'm sorry <laughs> this is Mr Edward isn't it Your Honor it was a fairly large earthquake yesterday most or not an earthquake hmm uh, the, there it goes <laughs> oh my goodness the inner temple this kind of tremor might. How could I have? She fled. She escaped. The elevator strikes again. <laughs> you can never escape my clutches. It all comes back to my master plan. Yes, for you see, Phoenix, it was I that instilled the fear of earthquakes in Edgy Boy. <laughs> You'll never be rid of him. And it's true, Iris was already there. However, 
They had already switched places by that point in time. When I arrived at the training hall, I was met by none other than Dahlia Hawthorne. That's quite enough already, Mr. Wright. Now see here. No judge in his right mind will consider the idea of spirit channeling. Well, you literally have your honor, though. How many... What do you mean you're not considering it? This has happened so many times. Be quiet. It's been a long time, Mr. Judge. That voice! I guess I'll have to ask again. Upon meeting a beautiful lady, I always ask for her name and profession. That's one of my rules. Dahlia Hawthorne, in my current profession, permanently retired. Ha! So you're not going to bother hiding your identity anymore, huh? Why should I? After all, I'm dead. There's really nothing you can do to punish me. What is going on here? Dahlia Hawthorne. I never thought we'd meet again. I never thought we'd meet like this. But this time I'll end it. For her and for myself. Okay, so... We're now fighting spirits from beyond the grave in court. Alright. The case continues. God damn. No, then let's continue where we left off, shall we? Well, witness. Yes, how can I help you, Mr. Judge? Well, it seems that, we're to, that if we're to learn the truth, we'll need to hear about your testimony. I have no problem with that. When you've seen what I have, sometimes the truth is better left unknown. In any case, let's hear your testimony. Tell us about the plan that was carried out last night. The whole plan began with my death. A stupid plan hatched by Morgan Fay to install her own daughter as the next master. But for it to work, Maya Fay would first have to die. The idea was for me to kill Maya and then have the blame pinned on Iris. The plan went wrong. But it seems to have succeeded anyway. Oh my god. So that means... You really are! Wait a minute. Did you just say the plan was to kill Maya Faye? Yes, you have a problem with that. Don't give us that nonsense. There's no way that... Watch yourself, try it. If you've got a problem, solve it during the cross-examination. That's one of my rules. Mr. Gatto is correct! And by the way, that's one of my rules as well! Kill Maya. Could it be true? The whole plan began with my death. <laughs> okay, I mean, the obvious point to push here is the plan went wrong. Stupid plan hatched by Morgan Fay to install her own daughter as the next master. For it to work, Maya would first have to die. The deal for me was to kill Maya and then have the blame pinned on Iris. The plan went wrong. You think the plan was a success? You heard me. Just as that woman had hoped. Maya Fay is dead. And the title of the master will pass on to Pearl Faith. That's absurd. Maya is just... She's just trapped. Trapped inside the sacred cavern. She's just buried alive. Really. You're as foolishly optimistic as ever, aren't you? My darling Feeny. Oh shit. You want to know the truth. Ever since we met, I've despised you. Your sniveling naivety and your pathetic fate in other people. Can't believe it. She meant to kill Maya. Gotta keep a cool head. And I need to get more information out of her. The only way to understand this plan and what she was after as well. Okay, we need to just press everything. You were executed last month, correct? Oh, <laughs> uh, someone's gonna read over this court case in a few months and be like, what the fuck happened here? <laughs> yes, I was hanged. It wasn't exactly pleasant. How would you manage to discuss the plan? When did you talk with Morgan Fay? Last year. She was transferred to the same detention center as me. Since I was on death row and she was my mother. It was actually pretty easy to meet with her. 
I see. So we need to discuss the plan. Ha, are you crazy? At first that woman was plan planning to kill me as well. Yeah, also, like, that penalty in this game, Jesus, it's fucking brutal. Yeah, oh my god. First, that woman's planning to kill me as well. Even though I'm her own daughter. I'll to make Pearl Fay the master of Karain. She's a cold, twisted woman. She thought she could finally regain her lost honor. The honor she lost when her younger sister, Misty, took her place as the master. Ever since that day, she's been working on this plan. A plan, huh? Okay. Stupid plan. You're talking about Pearl Faye, is that correct? Yes, though at first she had high hopes for the two of us. You and your twin sister, Iris. That's correct. Fortunately, neither of us had much spiritual power. That's why we were abandoned by her, along with our father. Abandoned? The only person I ever really cared about in life was myself. My sister was a nuisance, so I convinced my father to leave her at an old temple. You mean Iris? Yes, my father remarried a woman who also had a daughter. The less children you have, the more money there is to go around, right? And on top of that, my father had absolutely no interest in children in general. How oh, horrible! The really horrible one was that woman. That bitter, vengeful woman. It's her stubbornness that gave birth to that child. Pearl Fay. She was born with an abundance of spiritual power. Unfortunately for her, Morgan Fay heaped all of her broken hopes and dreams onto that poor child's back. All because of her pathetic dreams of having her bloodline become the main family. For it to work, Maya Fay would have to die. Maya would have to die, but why? For our bloodline to succeed as the main family, thus making Pearl the new master. The remaining descendants of the current master had to be taken care of. But Pearls would never agree to a plan like that. She adores Maya. How sad. You still don't get it, do you? What Pearl wanted had nothing to do with it. Morgan didn't care one bit about Pearl. The only thing she cared about was the position of the master. That's all. That's ridiculous. She was willing to sacrifice anything and anyone to achieve her goal. The life of her daughter. And naturally, the life of Maya Faye as well. How could anyone do that? The idea for me was to kill... Okay, this is the last one to press. You, you were going to kill Maya. Pearl didn't need to know anything about it. All she had to do was to follow the instructions in the letter and channel me. Then it would have simply used her body and finished the job. In any case, I'm already dead, and there's nothing any of you can do to do to me. <laughs> Phoenix is angry. Can't kill her now, damn it. So the plan was to blame the crime on your younger twin on Sister Iris of Hazakura Temple. She and I look absolutely identical. No one can tell us apart. If someone were to witness me killing Maya, naturally they would think it was Iris that had done it. And the witness in this case was the head nun, Sister Bikini. I never would have guessed she was going to return to Hazakura Temple that night, but you wound up seeing Iris's crime anyway. Why'd you want to pin the murder on Iris in the first place? She's your twin sister, isn't she? Twin sister, don't make me laugh. She's nothing but a backstabber. I couldn't care less about her. Backstabber? You just don't understand. You never will. Anyway, I just want to know one thing. What did you personally think of Morgan Fay's plan? I told you already, didn't I? It was a stupid plan. It had no point, no value other than fulfilling her own greedy desires. Yes. Was certainly nothing to be proud of. If that's how you feel, why did you help her carry it out? Why would you do it? Why would you kill Maya? You may not understand it, being the kind of gentle soul that you are. You may not be able to appreciate why someone like me would help a, help a woman like that. But then tell me why! Isn't it obvious? I'm not like that woman. I only act in my own self-interest. The reason I helped her was for myself my own personal satisfaction. What did you say? But this woman, Dahlia Hawthorne, she had her own reason for wanting Maya dead. You understand why I would kill Maya Faye now, what my goal was? I, 
guess revenge on Mia. Obviously, it's because you were helping Morgan Fay. Helping, don't make me laugh. From the day I was born to the day I died, I never helped anyone. I lived for myself, and in the end, I died for myself. I thought that was obvious. She wasn't actually cooperating with Morgan. She was just using Morgan and her plans so she could accomplish her own goal. All I wanted to do was kill Maya Fay. That was the only way I could think of to, of to get revenge. Revenge? It's like I have to, no choice but to present that piece of evidence. Can't believe it, she meant to kill Maya. Gotta keep a cool head. I need to get more information out of her. The only way to understand this plan, and what she was after as well. Okay, so she just wants revenge on Mia, I think. Stay there. Could it be that your actual goal had nothing to do with Maya Faye herself? As I said, none of you have the power to punish me anymore. Because I'm already dead. Well, I had the same problem, you see. You can't punish the dead. And you can't take revenge against them either. You want to take revenge on someone? I was sentenced to die because of that woman. Mia Fey. Someone knew this was it. I wanted to send her a message. It was out of her hands that I suffered my first humiliation. I wanted her to feel the same pain she made me feel. Sadly, when I realized revenge was impossible, I gave up. And the reason it was impossible was it perhaps because Mia Fey had already died. Yes. And I realized, there's only one way to take revenge against the dead. And how do you do that? Even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on. Forever. I want to take away the person that Mia Fey loved most. I want to kill her with my own hands. That would be the one and only way I could take my revenge against Mia Fey. That was the reason I helped out with that woman's plans. Just for that. For that you would kill Maya. Your goal was no different than that of Morgan Fey. As they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> In summation, <laughs> judge, please. <laughs> what a cruel plan. Cruel, cold, and heartless. Hmm. Don't waste your time preaching to the dead. I've already told you, there's not a thing you can do to me. At night. At about 9.30 p.m., I materialized into this world. I quickly pinned my hair up, put on a demon warden hood. And I picked up the staff that was by my side and left Hazakura Temple. So it was Elise Donum who had channeled her after all. Okay, yeah, like... Yeah, so Dahlia channeled... A ridiculous head nun never noticed a thing. Misty Fay must have caught on to protect Maya somehow. He left Maya Fay at the inner temple and wobbled back, clutching her poor old back. What'd you do then? That kid was easier to handle than I had hoped. I caught up with her in front of the stone lantern. And I took out the dagger I got from the storeroom and. So then you... You're saying you stabbed Maya? It's strange, but... I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. What does that mean? No clear memory! Okay, so Misty... I think. Misty knew what Pearl was going to do. So to save Pearl from committing this atrocity, Misty channeled... Dahlia instead. I don't think Maya's dead. Now, th the reason she doesn't have memory is because this is the moment where at least Donum basically died. Someone attacked her. But I don't know who this is at this point. I don't know. I think. I think I was stabbed. Yeah, she was stabbed in the back. She was stabbed. The last minute, Maya Fey must have stabbed me. I'm sure of it. That's not like her at all. Maya wouldn't stab a French fry with a plastic fork. <laughs> OK, 
okay. Anyway, I suddenly lost consciousness. But before I did, I scrawled her name on the lantern. Just as I was passing out, I wrote Maya behind my back. I had hoped it would cast suspicion on her. I can't believe she was thinking of that until the bitter end. That's where my memory temporarily stops. It stops! I don't have any memory of actually killing Maya Faye with my own two hands. My very last memory was... Maya's terror-filled eyes. When I woke up after that, I was in the sacred cavern surrounded by darkness. You were in the sacred cavern! The entrance was sealed with one of those trick locks. Somehow I've been trapped in there. So... Maya was channeling her then? How'd you wind up in there? I'd like to know that myself. Anyway, I was worried. I didn't know whether or not Maya Faye was dead. And I swore I wouldn't return to the underworld until I knew I had killed her myself. For a ghost, you're one tough cookie. I wanted to get out of there and make sure she was dead. But I couldn't do it. I couldn't get out. The trick lock stopped you, huh? I didn't know how to remove it. So then you're saying... You were actually confined against your will, inside this sacred cavern! Okay, so I, I... I think I still... I think I recognize what's probably happening here. I think Misty Faye channeled Dahlia to basically keep her contained to save pearls, right? Now, after... After basically Misty Faye was basically killed by a third party, it would seem, Maya then had to channel Dahlia to contain her to also save pearls. Because Iris mentioned in the plan that they have to get Pearl to safety. Iris mentioned that before, and that would have been when Iris was Iris. So the question is, who is the third party at this point? Because there's someone else. And why is it Furio Tigre? She never said that. No, so Iris said she had to get someone to safety, and it's implied that's Maya, but I, from the offset, I've thought it was Pearl. She was trying to get Pearl to safety. And I think that they were trying to contain Dahlia or something on the night. And that's what all this is about. You were actually confined against your will inside the sacred cavern! Yes, I wanted to get rid of that annoying lock as soon as possible. But it wasn't easy. I kept getting interrupted while I was working on it. Interrupt it? It was early in the morning. Someone came into the train room. What? Who? Could it have been? Maya! I thought the same thing. But I couldn't see. Why not? If someone had spotted me, I would have lost my chance to take revenge. So I made sure to hide myself well at the back of the sacred cavern. That morning, only two people could have gone to that train mill. Maya and Pearls. Pearls went there to cover the hanging scroll and gravy. Still, I finally managed to remove the lock. But, it was too late. What do you mean by that? The flies had already started to gather. The bridge had been fixed and the police had started their investigation, correct? Naturally, I couldn't go out. So instead, I returned to the cavern and put the lock back on myself. Oh, shit. I realized I wouldn't get a chance to see Maya's corpse as I had hoped. But just then, Lady Luck showed up. Lady Luck! After that big earthquake, she showed up all by herself. The real Iris. She said she'd come to make sure the sacred cavern was alright. Stupid girl. Came out from the sacred cavern and got a feel for the situation. And I locked her away in my place. I finally learned exactly what had happened. It was then that I learned that the plan had actually succeeded. What do you mean by your plan has succeeded? I misunderstood one thing, you see. That night, the one that had summoned me. I'd assumed that it was Pearl Fay. Well, of course you would have assumed that! It was written in the instructions! But I was wrong. 
person that had actually called my spirit back was... Misty Fay. The picture book otter. What? Well, it's really the only possibility, isn't it? After I lost consciousness in the garden, it was her body that was left lying there. Maya Fey. I wasn't able to kill her with my own two hands, my own hands after all. But even so, I made her commit the most vile sin a human could commit. And that is... Matricide. The sin of killing her own mother. No way. Oh no. Order in the court! What is the meaning of this? It's true that I was the one who attacked Maya Fey. But even so, the murderer who actually snuffed out Misty Fey's life was none other than your darling little Maya. I don't think that's true though, because she was stabbed in the back. Th this is impossible. Ridiculous. That's nonsense. Are you sure about that? Just think about it. There's even evidence supporting these facts, isn't there? What? What do you mean? What is the so-called evidence? The fact that Maya Fey has disappeared is evidence enough, isn't it? Huh? The idea that she's still in the sacred cavern is just ridiculous. She wasn't able to escape from the inner temple. That much is obvious. In that case, there was only one place she could be. Where? Do I have to spell it out? The bottom of the Eagle River, where else? Eagle River? Maya Fey killed her long-lost mother. Can you imagine the guilt she must have felt when she realized that? That's why she threw herself into the Eagle River. Most bodies that wind up in there are lost forever. Actually, I was- oh god, I'm fairly okay myself. Phoenix is alright. So, what do you have to say now, Feeny? Uh oh, uh -huh. Oh! Sorry, let me put that on silent and continue to my existential despair. Oops. Sorry, that's my phone. What kind of ringtone is that? Gotta hear. Okay. Thanks. Was it something important? They just finished removing the locks from the sacred cavern. That's great. What about Maya? There was a woman in the cave. Was it Maya Fey? It was the accused. Sister Iris. Oh shit! Yeah, so D Okay, so Maya did channel Dahlia's spirit. That's Maya on the stand right now. They switched places. Yep. Maya's on the stand. Yep. So, I think what they were trying to do is save Pearl. Misty Fey channeled Dahlia to save Pearl. A third party intervened to then save Maya. Misty Fey died in the process. Maya locks herself in the cavern uh, and channels Dahlia, but Dahlia's not let go, basically. And then when Iris came about, she was basically threatened or something to go in the cave in her stead? Something like that. It's too much. I'm lost and confused. I actually think it, it, it makes a weird bit of sense. They're I think they were trying to save Pearl. They didn't want Pearl to commit an awful murder because she tried to channel Dahlia on the night, but she couldn't. And that's because Dahlia was already being channeled. They needed to keep Dahlia channeled to prevent Pearl and then get everyone to safety. It is a bit confusing because Dahlia is like swapping bodies a lot. Yeah, I understand if some people are a bit lost. Spirit hot potato, basically. Also, I'm just gonna open a window again. I think we're, we're good now. There. Ugh. Yeah, the question is, who is the third party? Someone else was involved. That's the only bit we can't work out. It was the accused, Sister Iris. Huh? Don't look so surprised. I locked her in there yesterday. Just finished telling you that. So, what about Maya? Where is she? There was no one else found inside the sacred cavern. No, it can't be. 
told you, didn't I? She's dead. No. No. No, Phoenix, she has to be channeling someone. It's Maya right there. If Iris is found, then, like, you know, it's the process of elimination. It seems that this case has come to an end. A tragic end. Sadly, it appears the killer of Elise Donum, also known as Misty Faye, was her own daughter, Maya Faye. Overcome with guilt for what she had done, Maya Faye jumped to her death in the raging waters of the Eagle River. It can't be. Ha. Right. Have you ever heard this one? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. No matter how improbable it may seem. What is that supposed to mean, Prosecutor Gatto? According to this witness, Maya Fey threw herself into the Eagle River. However, is that really the truth? Remember, this woman testified earlier that the bridge was already on fire when the murder was taking place in the garden. Which means that Maya had thrown herself into the river. It must have been from the inner temple side, near the bridge. That's right, that's where she jumped from. But that's impossible. It's impossible to jump into the river from there. What? Don't get your panties all twisted up, Trite. Just relax and think through the whole thing again. Got a what? So it's impossible. The rock! <laughs> Wait, no. No, it's not the rock. Sorry, I got excited. Yeah, it's, um, the, there's a... The bedrock? The ground rock? But yeah, they, they couldn't have reached the river from that side. It's still rock! <laughs> so it's impossible. Maya couldn't have thrown herself into Eagle River. Well, Mr. Wright, Miss Autumn claims Miss Faye threw herself into the river from the t inner temple side. Do you have any evidence that refutes this claim? Um, yeah, it's just the map. It's impossible to jump into the Eagle River from the inner temple side. No one knows that better than this witness. What did you say? Eleven years ago, you jumped into the very same river. Just take a look at this overhead map. As you can see, below the cliff on the inner temple side is a big rock shelf. Oh! Oh! You're right! She wouldn't have reached the river if she had jumped off from there. Unless she used the pendulum swing to carry her to the river below! <laughs> In other words, if she had jumped, we should be able to see our body in this photo. Ah. Ha. So you finally figured it out. You. No. The rock has come full circle. <laughs> order, order. You, you're just playing with me. My face body is at the bottom of the Eagle River. There's no one else she could possibly possibly be hiding. Miss Hawthorne, have you ever heard this one before? Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. You might remember it, because Gatto said it about two minutes ago. Yes, just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Maya Faye wasn't inside the sacred cavern. We know that she didn't throw herself into the Eagle River. Correct. That eliminates all the most likely possibilities. Now, although it seems improbable, there's still one other place she could be. What? What is this one possibility you were talking about? That's obviously a bluff. So where is her dead body then? Finally, I think the pieces are falling into place. Normally the living have no way to punish the dead. But I think there is a way to give Dahlia Hawthorne the ultimate punishment. Shall I tell you, Miss Hawthorne? Shall I tell you where Maya Faye is this very instant? Maya Faye is in this very courtroom. <laughs> There's only one possibility left. Namely, she's right here in this very courtroom. What? 
Maya Fey is here. You say she's here in my courtroom? If you will look under your desk, your honor. <laughs> she's been hiding the whole time. <laughs> Dahlia Hawthorne, I seem to recall that you said I had misunderstood one thing, you see. So what? But I think there's one more thing you misunderstood. What do you mean? Tell me something. At this very moment, who is channeling Dahlia Hawthorne? By that, that's obvious. It's Pearl Fay, a pathetic little sniveling runt. You're wrong. Pearl's tried, but she couldn't do it. I've never failed at a challenge someone. This is the first time it's happened. Isn't there any explanation why you couldn't channel a spirit? It could happen if someone else was already channeling the same spirit. Someone called me before Pearl did. But who? Pearl's even tried again the day after the crime. But she couldn't do it. What could that mean? I think the truth is becoming clearer to you right about now. Am I correct? Ah. It wasn't Pearl's that channeled you. There was someone who could... There was someone who called you before she could. My badge! <laughs> My effect. This is an easy one. Pearls couldn't do it. And Misty Faye is gone. There's only one possibility left. Come on already! I can't stand the tension! Dahlia Hawthorne. The person channeling you right now must be... My Faye. What? But how could that be? Remember what this witness, Dahlia Hawthorne, said about her goal? She said that her goal was to kill Maya Fey. Yes, that's right. But if Maya challenged the spirit of someone that was trying to kill her. Ha. Well, Gramps, what could happen? Could it be? It looks like you finally understand, Your Honor. Well, I don't. What are you going on about? What I'm going on about is the reason Maya channeled you. And there's only one reason. To protect herself from you. To protect yourself from me. Yes, on the night of the crime, you were only interested in one thing. Killing Maya Fey. Pat back to Hazakura Temple. Hazakura was closed off and there was no further run. So then the problem became, where would be the safest place to hide? Ah, ah. You mean, that's when she channeled me. All this time you thought you had been channeled by pearls. That's why it never occurred to you. At Maya's hiding place was you. No, no, don't say that. You're saying that I, Dahlia Hawthorne, was played for a fool by that little whelp. Maya Faye killed herself, isn't it obvious? Sorry, but no. It would have been impossible for her to jump into the Eagle River. This was the only avenue of escape open to Maya. The only way that Maya could disappear. From the inner temple. I don't believe you. A stupid little girl like that who has never been out in the real world. She could never have come up with a plan like that. Who could have ever given her such a brilliant idea? Well. Wait. Me, of course. Mia. Mia Fey. It's been a long time. Dahlia Hawthorne. So it's true. It was you. Yes. Ha! Here's something else. What? What are you doing here? <laughs> We've come a long way from the anime crime game to where there's now two spirits of the dead fighting each other in a courtroom. That hair. It's pearls, right? Tell me something, Dahlia. I want you to think back to that night one more time. You had just cornered Maya in the Inner Temple's garden. And then... In the final moments of the fight, you lost consciousness. I was stabbed by Maya Fey. Actually, Maya lost consciousness at the same time as you. She did. Not terribly surprising since she was about to be killed. When she woke up, she was in the training hall. That's when Maya decided she needed help. So she channeled me. She explained in a memo the situation she was in. She asked me what I thought she should do. She did that. I can't believe it. Of course, I didn't have all the details. 
But one thing was perfectly clear. And that was! I knew that you couldn't be allowed to wander free. Free? What do you mean? It was a race against time. So I wrote down two things that Maya had to do. Channel Dahlia Hawthorn as soon as possible. And lock herself in the sacred cavern until help arrived. It was Maya who put that lock on there. Yes, but why did you order her to do those two things? If she hadn't done it, Dahlia Hawthorn would have been channeled by someone else. I won Pearl Fay. Yep, yeah, so this was all part of the plan to protect Pearl. Yes, Pearl didn't properly understand the plan. So all she was trying to do was follow her mother, Morgan Fay's instructions. If she had succeeded in channeling Dahlia Hawthorne's spirit, things would have turned out very badly, to put it mildly. But that's how it was. Dahlia Hawthorne would have used the body of Pearl Fay to kill, to kill Maya at all costs. Yes, it certainly sounds like that was the intent all along! How dare you? I won't forget this. Why not just admit it, Dahlia Hawthorne? Your little plan was nothing but a big failure. Yes. Another failure to add to the pile of shame, wouldn't you say? What do you mean by another? Think about it, Dahlia. Remember all your past crimes. Not a single one of them was a success. They all ended in failure. What? How dare you? Eleven years ago. The fake kidnapping, your very first crime. You got your hands on a two million dollar diamond, but... After Terry Falls escaped and went to meet with Valerie Hawthorne, the truth was exposed. Shut your mouth, that wasn't my fault. It was because of that stupid oath of a prisoner and that weakling of a policewoman. And then, one year later, you tried to kill me. <laughs> well, I'm still alive, but... You wound up killing someone else. As a result, you were sentenced to death. It's one stupid move after another for you, but it's no longer funny. You, wipe that smug, happy-go-lucky smile off your face. And now this. You've messed up again. You let Maya Fey escape, even though she was right there in front of you. She's not taking it too well. Mia Fey. Mia Fey, Mia Fey, Mia Fey. You, you, spinster. <laughs> oh, come on, you can come up with a better insult than that. I was supposed to kill Maya Fey like I swore I would. And only if you had gotten this, and if only you had gotten this spiky-haired jerk the guilty verdict. I wouldn't have been hanged to death. True. But I think you finally understand, Dahlia Hawthorne. You will never defeat me. What? What did you say? Whether you're alive, dead, or somewhere in between, you will never defeat me. As long as I'm around, you're destined to lose for all of eternity. I remember what you said earlier in the trial. You said there was no way we could punish you. Because you are already dead. What about it? Then you said, even when the body dies, the spirit, the ego, it lives on forever. That's very true, Dahlia. And that's exactly the punishment you'll never be able to escape from. For all of eternity, you'll have to remain as Dahlia Hawthorne. A miserable, pathetic, weak creature who can never win at anything. And for you, there is no escape from that. No hope of freedom. Since the day you were executed, the narrow bridge that once stretched out in front of you has burnt to a crisp. Oh, shit. You. Oh. You're. Wrong. It. Can't. Be. How could I. Lose. To the likes. Of you. Just take the loss, Dahlia. <laughs> Case closed, your honor. It no longer matters. I don't care whether you win or lose anymore. The only thing I want is for you to come out of Maya's body right now. Oh, here she goes. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh 
Oh shit! I'm not ready. Not ready to go. Oh shit, I think she just got sent to hell! Never thought we'd destroy someone's soul in court. Oh, my is still dead. <laughs> Everyone just chatting. <laughs> I was like, oh Jesus, what happened there? No, then. I assume you are the real Iris. Yes, I was just rescued from the sacred cavern. Wait, no, that th this isn't Maya though. This is this is. Yep, this is actually Iris who just came from the cavern. Maya's here as well. I must say, you and your twin sister are indeed identical from what I can see. In any case, it appears that everything has finally been cleared up. Mr. Grotto, what happened to Dahlia Hawthorne? If you ask me, Your Honor, it looks like she went back to the hell she came from. It seems that Misty Fay wasn't the only victim of this crime. Maya Fay, as well as the young Pearl Fay, were, all, were also victims of this wicked and selfish plan. Yes, Your Honor. The tragedy of Medium Valley has finally come to an end, it think, seems. I don't think it ha No, this is a third party. It's not over. It will be be- It will be best for everyone if no further attempt was made to channel that spirit again. Um, Your Honor. Yes, what is it? About this whole spirit medium thing. It's almost weird how comfortable you seem with the concept now. Well, to be frank, my younger brother is quite judgmental. He often criticizes me for not studying hard enough. That's why I made a concerted effort to study up on the Korean channeling technique. Hey, isn't that the New Year's issue of Occult? <laughs> I've seen quite a few things in my many years on the bench. And in all that time, I finally learned this one thing. Each case is different, and takes place in its own world, if you will. That's why I brushed up on learning everything I need to know about the spirits of the damned. <laughs> in order to fully understand that world. First, we have to immerse ourselves in it completely. And that's where my brother and I used to differ. Never thought of it that way. At any rate, it's time to pass judgment in the case of Iris of Hazakura Temple. Objection. Here we go. Yeah, it's not over. You're a little too fast with that gavel, Your Honor. What do you mean by that, Mr. Gatto? This trial. It isn't over yet. That's what he means. What? Trite. Remember what Miss Evil Spirit said in her testimony. Huh? Dahlia's testimony. Secret boss. <laughs> well, you beat the main campaign. Now it is an optional side trial. <laughs> Post-game. <laughs> I caught up with it in front of the stone lantern. Then I took out the dagger I got from the storeroom and... It's strange, but... I don't have a clear memory of what happened after that. I think, I think I was stabbed. Just as Dahlia Hawthorne was about to attack Maya. She was stabbed and killed by someone. Yes, that's right! The person that was ultimately killed was the spirit medium that channeled Dahlia. At least Donum. No, Misty Fay. But, who killed her? We still don't know who did it. This isn't over. Unless someone else is found guilty, the accused is still on trial. You can't let her walk until there is evidence that proves her innocence. No way. But... This court isn't prepared for any future testimony. The prosecution is ready to call our final witness. Final witness? This one will clear up the whole mystery. The mystery of who killed Misty Fay. Indeed. Is it really alright, Mr. Prosecutor? Of 
course it's alright. Madam Attorney. Very well! Who's this final witness? Ha! Isn't it obvious? There's one person who saw the whole event, and will put the final dagger in its place. Someone who saw the murder take place! The very person who saw her mother killed in front of her own eyes. You mean Maya? She can't. She can't testify after what she's just been through. We need to find the truth. The prosecution calls Maya Fey to the witness stand. God damn, Gatto, give her a moment. Very well. But first, we'll take a brief recess. We'll have to wait for Miss Fey to recover before summoning her. Once we receive the doctor's permission, we will proceed with the trial. Hey, Trite, I've got something to say to you, so listen up. What is it? I don't think much of you as a lawyer. It's always the same with you. You somehow manage to just squeak by without even a faint understanding of the case. <laughs> I mean, sometimes the case isn't revealed to us until uh, spirits from beyond the grave tell us what's actually happening. Sometimes beautiful women always seem to come dashing in at the last minute to save you. You've got some nerve. <laughs> But that's not going to happen this time. This time, you're going to have to do this by yourself. That's enough! This court is now in recess! He's catching on the Deus Ex Mia. We can't rely on her. Gummy Bear, thank you for the thousand bits. I'm truly sorry about everything. You were working so hard to defend me. But I was missing all day, and we didn't even have a chance to talk. He's right. When I met Iris at the training hall yesterday, they had already switched places, and Iris was inside the sacred cavern. I want to, uh, to at least be in the defendant's box today to root you on. Uh. <coughs> oh, excuse me, sorry. Ugh. Well, it wasn't your fault. You were locked up this whole time. There's something more important than that, though. I, ha I have to ask you, why did you help your sister out as much as you did? Huh? If you had tried to get help at the Sacred Cavern yesterday, you wouldn't have spent an entire day locked up in there. Thanks for the blessings, guys. My sister, I felt sorry for her. She was abandoned by her mother and never got any love from her father either. Yes, but it was the same for you too, wasn't it? Yes, but at least I had Sister Bikini. It was like a mother to me. Only Dahlia had come with me to Hazakura Temple. I always, I always loved her. Dahlia was always so smart, so strong. She never complained about a thing. That's why I, that's why I promised her that I would help her. You talking about the fake kidnapping case 11 years ago? Yes. I wanted to be useful to her in some way. But, as usual, I was too cowardly. At the last minute, I ran away. Because of that. Dahlia's stepsister, Valerie, ended up... That was the case that, that wounded Mia so badly. But, things didn't end there, of course. Some people suspected that my sister was involved in the murder. Some people, you must mean. Yes, two defense attorneys. Mia Fey and Diego Armando. After poisoning Mr. Armando, it was getting too close to learn the truth. Dahlia even tried to kill the person who had unknowingly hid the poison for her. You. That's right. Iris, there's one more thing that I have to ask you. Yes, what is it? On the night of the murder, the person that cleaned up the corpse of the victim Elise Stoneham. Was it? Was it really you? Yes, it was me. That night, after I rang the lights out bell, I went back to my room. At around 10.30, I received a call on my cell phone. There's a problem. Come to the inner temple right away. I got in the snowmobile and headed for the inner temple. But... path to the inner temple was cut off, right? Exactly. Can't just leave the body here. 
that you've got to do this exactly as I say, got it? <laughs> there she goes. <laughs> it was me, I was the one who received that for her body. The murder weapon had been left in her body so she wouldn't bleed too much. The staff that Mr. Galise always held. I knew it. The actual murder weapon was the staff. Yes, that's right. I brought the body back to Hazakura Temple in the snowmobile. But why? Why did you alter the body? I didn't want anyone to know that the staff was the murder weapon. I didn't want to leave anything that would lead back to Misty Fey. So I dressed her in a robe and stabbed her with the Shichishito. I wiped the blood off the bl staff's blade and left it next to her on the ground. Iris, just tell me one last thing. Tell me the name of the person that called your cell phone. The real killer. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I can't do it. I can't say who did it. <laughs> okay, well, enjoy your prison sentence. I'm off. I'm gonna call it in early today, you know? I've had a good run here. <laughs> Victim staff updated in the court record. As a sword hidden inside, the actual weapon used to murder the victim. Defendant. Yes. The judge is calling you. He wants to see you in his chambers. He has some questions about Dahlia Hawthorne. Alright. Well then, I'll see you later. There's something I wanted to tell you. Oh, uh, okay. Something she wants to tell me. Nor normally, when you say that, you say what it is you want to... Tell the person, but no, she's gone. So it's true. Iris cooperated with the real killer. <laughs> Even from the very beginning. Phoenix. Mia. Uh, how is Maya doing? Physically, I'm not worried. She'll recover completely. But emotionally, she's been hurt very badly by this case. I see. You don't mean. She's learned who Elise Stoneham really was. Yes, I went to the medical office and talked with her. I told her everything I knew. But why? Maya is stronger than you think. I knew she could take it. All of it. What do you mean by that? I want you to figure that answer out by yourself. The trial is about to restart. The real killer. Do you know who it is yet? Iris wouldn't tell me who called her, but still. I think that just maybe. I know who it was. That night, the victim was killed in the Garden of the Inner Temple. And the criminal wasn't just there by accident. Which means that the killer knew of Dahlia's plan from the very beginning. And one more thing. The victim was moved to the Hazakura Temple side by Pendulum. In other words, the criminal couldn't cross the bridge. That means they were stuck on the Inner Temple side for almost an entire day. Exactly. So the culprit was someone that wasn't in Hazakura Temple the following day. He's the only one who fits. We went through the process of elimination. No one else could have done it. No one else makes sense. Gato was just kind of absent. Wait a minute. But if you take off that visor... That's not Gato! <laughs> I don't even need to say his name anymore. You already know where the joke is going. <laughs> As someone that wasn't in Hazakura Temple the following day. That's as much help as I can give you. The rest of the battle is yours to win, or lose. Okay, I've got it. Thank you, Mia. Finally, it's almost time to bring this case to an end. What exactly did Maya see, anyway? And who was it that actually killed Misty Fey? Whoever it was, I have to prove it. Me, all by myself. So was Gato just seeking revenge on... Dahlia? Why would Gato do it? Is it just straight up revenge? There's an argument to like him trying to protect Maya, but also get back at them for this whole situation. Trying to protect Maya, revenge, bit of bolt. <laughs> 
Van Gado. No, for you see, it wasn't Gado at all that masterminded this plan. <laughs> Now then, before you proceed any further, I'm going to announce the results of the test we had performed earlier. Tests. Yes, tests! On the bloody dagger that was found stuck in the pine tree. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. That's the weapon that Maya Faye used when she, when she fought with the victim. So what are the results? Was it the victim's blood or... Due to time constraints, a full test wasn't possible. However, there's one thing we can say with certainty. The blood that was on this dagger was not the victim's blood. That is all. Now let's restart this trial. So it wasn't Misty's blood on the dagger. Then whose was it? Did Gato get injured? Found stuck in a pine tree in inner ga temple garden. The blood doesn't match the victim's. I'm sure both the defense and the prosecution know this, but... This trial is rapidly coming to a close. Both sides will need to show some firm evidence with their claims. I understand, Your Honor, from what I've heard. The witness is dangerously weak, physically speaking. So let's finish this quickly. Agreed. Very well, please bring in the last witness. Witness, please tell us your name and profession. Maya Faye. My profession is, um, I'm the assistant manager at Wright & Co. Law Offices. Maya. According to the magazine I have here, you're a spirit medium of the Korean channeling technique. I, I'm frightened. The Fey Clan. I don't want any more to do with it. Oh, Maya. The pain the Fey bloodline causes must be unbearable. Very well. Now, Miss Fey, when the event occurred, you were in the garden of the Inner Temple. And... You witnessed the moment of Miss Elise Donham's murder. Is this correct? I, um, I... I didn't see any... Straighten up this instant, young lady. Huh? Pick your head up and speak clearly. There's always time for crying later. But I... Your mother was killed right in front of your eyes. There's nothing you can do to change that fact. Jesus, God, oh, give, her, give her some sympathy. Especially considering you probably killed her mother. You're the only one who fits the profile. But there's something you can do. You can finish this. You've been watching the whole thing, right? You've seen the witness come out and you've seen us squeeze the truth out of them. Now it's your turn. Let's hear your testimony. On the night of the crime, what exactly did you see happen? Witness, if you please. Yes, your honor. I was, I was passing through the garden on my way to his spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly, someone struck me over the head. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. I think I screamed, help me. Then something warm splashed over me. That's when I lost consciousness. So you were struck on the head? I suppose it must have been the staff. Maya, the person who hit you. It was Dahlia Hawthorne, wasn't it? I'm sorry, Nick. I just... I couldn't see. I don't know who it was. Maya, oh, think hard. Sorry, Nick, but I really couldn't. Ha! Can't say it was an especially good, good night for young ladies to be walking around alone. It seems that it will be hard to determine the criminal through testimony alone. Well done, Mr. Wright. Please begin your cross-examination. Yeah, God, oh, please. Maya, hang in there. Doesn't look well at all. Okay, I was passing through the garden on the, on the way to a spare prep room when it happened. Suddenly, someone struck me over the head. Who did it? Who hit you? Ah, well, I didn't see who it was. I was hit from behind. I didn't see the person. But after that, your attacker was in front of you. How could you not see who it was? Oh, 
Let me think for a sec. I'm sorry. I just can't remember. I was really having a hard time. What should I do? See if you can get any detail. Come on, Maya. This isn't making sense. Why didn't you see this person? Um, well, let me think. It was, um... Oh, yeah, that's right. It was dark, that's it. It was dark! It's not good to have too much light around when someone is undergoing spiritual training. Come to think of it, there was an earlier testimony to that effect as well. It was dark in the garden on the night of the crime. Which is why she didn't see her attacker. Thought maybe she was trying to hide something, but I guess not. Stricted by the testimony thus far, the identity of the attacker was most likely... The spirit that was channeled by Elise Donham, Dahlia Hawthorne. Very well, please continue with your testimony. What happened after you were struck on the head? Um, if she was struck in the head... Has blood on it. Maybe it's from that. Maybe she was just bopped with the staff. I feel like there was blood in it, though. Like, you know, that, that that's really fucking bad. Yeah, maybe it's not that. She got bonked and there's blood. Like, yeah, her, her skull is probably done for. I stumbled and ended up against the stone lantern. What happened afterwards? My attacker was in front of me, blocking off my escape, I think. You think? After getting hit like that, I was in a state of panic. There were only two things rolling around in my mind at the time. Well now, this is beginning to get interesting. What were the two things rolling around in your mind? Um, my name is Maya Fey. One plus one equals two. <laughs> you see, for some crazy reason, I was afraid I was going to lose my memory. I know it's odd considering my life was in danger, but that's how it was. It's not odd at all! Your actions are understandable, given the circumstances. So, what did you do then? I think I screamed, help me. You think you screamed, but you're not sure. Listen, I was a complete wreck. It was dark and I couldn't see my attacker. Was it a man, a woman, an adult, a child? I had no idea. I was scared out of my wits. Believe me, my dear. I'm certain I would have soiled my robes. <laughs> Thanks for that comment, Judge. I thought this person might attack me, so I... So I... Anyway, I'm pretty sure I screamed. I thought that it was my last hope. That sounds like poor little Maya really was out of her mind. I wonder what she meant by last hope. What do I do? Okay... Wait a minute, Maya. What's this my last hope stuff? Um, what? What do you mean by your last hope? No, no, that's what you said. You said my last hope. Huh, what? I said what? Look, you were facing an attacker that you couldn't see and you screamed, right? You screamed, help me. Um, yeah. But you testified that you screamed that because you thought it was your last hope. Oh, well, you know, that's like... What do you call it when that happens? I was not doing so well up there. Oh yeah, um, I... Oh, that's right. I remember now. I was facing my attacker, but that's not who I was screaming at. Ooh, okay. What did you just say? Yeah, that's right. It was the person behind my attacker that I was yelling at. That's who I was screaming to for help. Ah! What is it now? I messed up. I didn't... I didn't mean to let that slip out. Huh? Witness! Are you absolutely sure of what you're saying? Behind the attacker, there was another person! Um, I am. Well, I, uh, meant to keep that part a secret. Yeah. What have I done? Ha! Takes a ton of pressure to make a diamond. That's what I always say. A ton of pressure. You're in a court of law here. You can't make things up or try to hide things in this chamber. Witness! The information you just presented is vital to the case! I want you to add it to your testimony! Okay. So... Because I think this is Gatto. But Gatto's, like, egging on the case to go this way. Is this some kind of, like, penance that he wants to pay? Or, like... Punishment for his failure, he wants to uphold the law. Because this is kind of self-inflicted, and even he's insistent on what's going to find him guilty, I feel. 
you know? I could see a man behind my attacker by the light of the stone lantern. A man. Who is this man? Well, you see, I couldn't see. You couldn't see. He's used this excuse twice now. Well, you know, lantern light isn't very bright. Lantern light, did you say? There's a great big stone lantern in the garden. They always light it when an acolyte is there for training, but was not lit the night of the crime. She saw Gatto's visor. Hey, you know what they say, under the lantern, darkness reigns. So I could see the person that was further away, but not my attacker who was closer. Plus, there, w there w weren't any other light sources in the garden at the time. Yep, save here. So there was a man standing behind your attacker. Um, yeah. That man. He's the killer. He stabbed her from behind. He's the one who killed Elise Stoneham. Otherwise known as Misty Faye, your mother. The killer? Maya, you know who killed your mother, don't you? Um, what is the meaning of this, Mr. Wright? To be frank, your honor, I think she's in shock and quite confused. That's why she hasn't noticed the huge problem with her testimony. Huh? What do you mean? What problem? Maya, on the night of the crime, that stone lantern was out of commission. Huh? What? It's true. There was no light anywhere in the garden that night. No! Order! Order in the court! Mr. Gatto! Explain this! Add the pureness of milk to the perfect, clear darkness of coffee. Stir. Gato, could you get to the fucking point? <laughs> that is the state of the witness's mind right now. A cup of cafe au lait. Cafe au lait? Is that even legal? Mr. Trite's words are the milk, and you are the spoon. Your Honor. <laughs> What's that mean? I'm a spoon! I'm no spoony bird, I'll have you know. Another, another uh, rap cheeky reference in there. Final Fantasy IV. You must have noticed it too, Trite. This witness's mental state is highly unstable right now. It's not hard to understand why she would make a little mistake like that. Sorry, but that's not going to cut it. Oh, are people saying what? So, Spoonie Bard, it's a, it's a quite famous translation for Final Fantasy IV, for like a sage character yelling at Edward the Bard. Uh, he hurdles abuse in Japanese, but they translate it for English, you spoony bard. And it's like a popular kind of like joke and meme in Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy nerd here to help you out. That's where it comes from. Fucking nerd. <laughs> Genshin player. It's not even Genshin this time. It's Final Fantasy. Come on. The classics. What'd you just say? If there truly was no light in the garden. Then there's a fatal contradiction in the witness's last bit of testimony. Nick. May I? Recall that the witness's statement about her attacker. She said that she didn't know if it was a man or a woman, an adult or a child. And yet... The witness could describe a person that was standing behind her attacker, and she quite clearly described him as a man. Ah. In other words, that would have to mean that Maya actually saw our mystery person, despite it being so dark that she couldn't see the face of her own attacker. No. Order, order! What in the world does this all mean, Mr. Wright? You say Miss Face saw the real killer under pitch black conditions. Right. Do you have any idea what you're proposing? How could she have seen in the dark? There was no other light source at the scene. There are some things that you can only see in the dark, Mr. Gatto. Maya, you did see who, who the killer was in the dark. And now, you're trying to cover for him. Cover? For the man that killed her mother? There's only one conclusion I can draw from this. You know who this man is. Please, Nick don't know anything. Please, 
I'm begging you. Ha! You talk a good game, Trite. But let's see if you can walk the walk. It was pitch black. So what could the witness see? I'm calling your bluff. No, Nick, don't. Please, stop. Maya's dead set in protecting this guy. The man who murdered Maya's long lost mother. But, I can't let him get away with it. I'm a lawyer, an officer of the court. I'm here to find the truth. All right, Mr. Wright, time to show us what you've got. Who's this person that you say Miss Face saw in the darkness? This is gonna be a bit wild, Your Honor, but bear with me. <laughs> because it was pitch black, Miss Faye was able to recognize the killer easily. I'm sure the court would like to see for itself how this is possible. What? But how do you propose to show us something like that? It's easy. We just need to recreate con the conditions of that night. Conditions? Your Honor. The defense officially requests that all the lights in this courtroom be turned off. <laughs> what? This is... but it can't be! Ha! That was a nice bit of deduction. Trite. Well, everyone, this is the man Maya saw on the night of the murder. Order! Order! Prosecutor Gato, what is the meaning of this? Surely you must be shocked to hear yourself accused of such a thing. Why aren't you denying it? Ha! Your Honor, you're asking the wrong person. What do you mean by that? If you've got a question, ask the witness. That's one of my rules. Well, Maya, how about it? What you saw that night? Was it three glowing red lights? Well, witness, answer the question. Y You're wrong. I, I never saw that. Maya, I thought the person that stabbed my mother was a man for a totally different reason. What? Witness! Mr. Wright! What the- Stop your chattering, your honor. Chattering? <laughs> this is an aside question. You think if, like, the battery charge in this runs low, like, the lights go down, like, kind of like your phone, like, ew. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's candid now. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's continue with the testimony. <laughs> Please tell us how you knew the killer was a man. Yes, Your Honor. I didn't realize it until after I woke up, but... When I came to, I was just lying there on the training hall floor. By the time I got back to the garden, the place had totally changed. Torches were lit, and the body was gone. And all of the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up, too. It makes sense why Gato missed that detail with Maya then. He was kind of cleaning up to try and cover the scene of the crime. But he couldn't see that. Since the person did all that work alone, I just assumed it was a man. Hey, well, I don't... What's the logic there? Sorry? It was after the crime took place that the witness came to think the killer was a man! Yes, that's right. I'm sorry, Your Honor. No need to apologize. As Mr. Gatto said, you're utterly exhausted. Only naturally, you'd be a little confused. Also, if you consider the situation you described, it doesn't seem too much of a stretch to assume the culprit was a man. Is it just because it took a lot of physical labor? Like... <laughs> Like, the, the fucking Iris, like, took a body and, like, stabbed it with a massive fucking sword after a pendulum effect. 
You know, like... <laughs> I think there's been more, like... <sighs> Alright. Mr. Wright, proceed with your cross-examination! Okay, right. It's a bit out there, isn't it? Yeah, I've... Hmm... I was just lying there on the train off floor. By the time I got back to the place, the garden totally changed. Torches were lit and the body was gone. All the snow around the stone lantern had been carefully cleaned up too. It hadn't been carefully cleaned up. Uh, because we know they literally left scrawled blood. No? Okay, press it first. So you're saying the killer cleaned up the snow? It did look really odd. The snow was removed in a natural looking rectangular shape around the lantern. There was a lot of shovels around, around the inner temple. But they're all really heavy. Way too heavy for me to use. An odd fellow indeed, this killer. Why on earth would anyone want to take snow away? Well, there's one thing I can think of. Didn't you say a lot of the victim's blood sprayed onto the snow? Yeah. The area I collapsed and ended up being splattered. In other words, the killer's purpose was to hide the bloody snow. I think that's the most reasonable explanation. Perhaps! However, there's something that's bothering me. The killer just wanted to hide the snow with blood on it. There was no need to remove that amount. You're not gonna comment on the blood that's still there? That's true. You could have scooped up just the snow that was stained with blood. Looks like there are some mysteries behind this issue. But I think this will help explain them. Yeah, I'm surprised I can't present that because, yeah, carefully cleaned up, but like, no, they missed this. And this actually really supports the claim that it's Gato because he couldn't recognize that. You know? He can't see red. Um... Lantern here? No? I feel like I have the right logic, but I just don't know what prompt I can use then. A quick help me out chat, can I use like either Gato or the Lantern on one of these prompts? That Maya's got right now. Or do I need to do some more work? Not yet, okay. Okay, well we'll keep pressing then. I think I've got the right logic. The torches were lit and the body was gone. The torches were lit. Yes, that's how I noticed that the whole scene had changed. I didn't say it was the killer who lit the torches. I mean, who else would do it? Could it be? The killer probably lit them since it'd be impossible to do any cover up work in the dark. However, if that's true. There's one thing that still bothers me. Why'd the killer go to the effort of moving the body? It's true. It's hard to see how that would be of any advantage to the killer. The only one who would gain anything from that would be the only person that was at the inner temple, Maya. Very well. Let me hear some more about the condition of the crime scene. Naturally, the killer must have done it, right? Yes, I think so. Why would the killer tamper with the crime scene like that? There must have been something that the killer desperately wanted to hide. I... True it is, when I saw the crime scene, I felt something. You did? Yes. I felt like the killer was hiding the evidence for me, for my sake. What? Hiding it for you? Everyone knew that I was the only one at the inner temple that night. My sister Bikini had come back and looked at the garden. She may have thought that you had done it. No, she definitely would have thought so. And you're saying that's why the killer cleaned up, cleaned up the crime scene to make it look like nothing had happened. Yes, I'm sure of it. Well, that's certainly an important piece of information. I want you to add that to your testimony. Yes, Your Honor. I think it was for my sake that the killer cleaned up the evidence of what had happened. Okay, except for the writing. Except for the writing. So Misty Faye must have thought... Otherwise? No, because if Dahlia was still possessing her, maybe for a bit... Maybe that was like her last-ditch effort to kind of get Maya. 
Maybe. The body of Elise Donan was carried all the way to Hasakura Temple's courtyard. Then at the garden, the real scene of the crime. The snow that we suspect was covered in blood was scooped up and removed. It's reasonable to believe all this was done in an attempt to hide the true crime scene. However, there's still one matter that seems somewhat odd. Oh, and what would that be? You must have figured it out by now, Mr. Gatto. It's the message written in blood on the lantern. It was written very clearly on the white stone lantern. Maya. Ah. If the killer was so motivated to protect Maya from suspicion, then why didn't they wipe the writing off the lantern? Ah! You're right! Order, order! But, Mr. Wright, isn't it a fact that, that the killer was trying to cover up the crime scene? Indeed, but it doesn't make much sense to move the body and remove the bloody snow, and not wipe off the most incriminating thing of all, the bloody writing. <laughs> I know it's like, the bloody writing, but it's just like, oh, there's bloody writing there! Didn't move the bloody writing! <laughs> bloody hell! <laughs> Fucking right on the wall, innit? Objection. But if that's the case, you have an explanation for the killer's mysterious behavior. Why would this killer move the, the body and remove all this, that snow, but then leave the bloody right on the lantern? I don't know what the killer's plan was, but it's the fact that the killer left the right on the lantern. There must be a reason for it. Well, Mr. Wright, let's hear your opinion. Why did the killer leave the message written in blood in the lantern? They didn't notice it. They couldn't have. You can't see red. Prosecutor Gatto, earlier in this trial you gave me some good advice. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. We've had this said like four times already. Mr. Wright, what's your point? Maybe you're not as dumb as I thought. The real killer wanted to disguise the fact that a crime had occurred there. If that's the case, they wouldn't have left the, the bloody writing on the stone lantern on purpose. <laughs> Therefore, it must mean that they didn't notice it. But that doesn't make any sense. The torches were all lit and everything. There's no way any normal person would miss something as glaring as that. You're right. There is no way any normal person would. What are you trying to say, Mr. Wright? There's only one person involved in this incident who could have missed seeing the bloody writing on the wall! <laughs> Manfred Von Tigre gives 5,000 bits. You sees, where was I who was convinced Maya that Gatto saved hers? Walking her! Thank you very much, Von Tigre. Thank you very much. <laughs> And who would that be? Who is the person that could have failed to notice the bloody writing? <laughs> Mr. Gatto. This is what you said yesterday. My eyesight is pretty messed up. Even with these huge goggles on my head, I still can't see everything. You can't see everything? Is that correct, Mr. Gatto? This lantern was submitted as evidence today. I would like the court to think back to the moment it was first presented. This lantern. There's something written on it. Why, oh, it's written in blood. Nonsense. This lantern is as clean as a whistle. Mr. Gatto, just admit it. There are certain colors you can't see. Correct? You can't see red in a white background, can you? That's right. We went through this once before. During the poisoning case at Trebian. It's the apron the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. So I spilled coffee on. Is something still bothering me, Mr. Gatto? Why have you not explained the bloodstain to the court? Bloodstain? What bloodstain would that be? Don't play games, prosecuted the blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a bloodstain. You could see the coffee on the white apron, but you couldn't see the ketchup, because it was red. Ha! It's strange. In a black and white photo, those letters would have appeared black to me. I wonder, why am I the only one that can't see them? So did Mr. Gatto, are you admitting it? 
Do you admit that you can't see the red writing on the lantern? Hey, Gramps. Didn't you know? That's the reason why I don't drink red tea. Wasn't sure about it until now, but... I just can't believe it. Prosecutor Gatto is the murderer. But, there's no going back now. I finally figured out the truth. Mr. Gatto, the defense at this time formally accuses you. You are the murderer of Miss Elise Stone, also known as Miss Misty Fay. It's hard to believe this may be true. However, once again, Mr. Wright has brought up a disquieting fact about you. Ha. Just make sure you don't fill out the indictment in red ink, Gramps. Come on. How does a little graffiti make me the killer? Besides, it's not like my name that... It's my name that's written there. I'm certain that the killer wasn't able to see the color red. This is rich. Do go on, try. The answer is right there at the crime scene. In the snow. In the snow? How so? Well, for example, why did the killer move all that snow? Your Honor, you said it yourself. If he wanted to hide the blood, if he wanted to hide the bloody snow, why didn't he just take out that area? Yes, why didn't he just take out that area? Ah, oh, could it be? Yes. The killer couldn't see the red blood that had seeped into the snow. And so he had to remove all of the snow. He couldn't be sure of where the blood had landed, so he removed the whole area. Isn't it more likely that the killer couldn't see the blood because it was dark? Not a chance. The torches were all lit. He would have been able to see just fine. It seems that once again, this trial has taken an unexpected turn, to say the least. Can you explain this, Mr. Gatto? Wait, wait just a minute. Maya. What is a witness? Mr. Gatto isn't the killer. After all, he didn't, he didn't even come to the inner temple until two days after the murder took place. He didn't show up until after that old bridge got fixed up. Objection. Maya. You can't testify to something like that. Why? What do you mean? After the murder happened, you didn't even exist. You didn't? I'm afraid I don't follow. Are you senile, old man? I didn't want to ask it, but I'm glad someone did. We established this just a little while ago. After the murder, this witness was unconscious for a long time. Because she was channeling Dahlia Hawthorne. Oh, that's right! Please, Your Honor, let me add to my testimony. Nick, please listen to me. Maya, you plan to cover up for God no matter what the cost. If that's the case, then I've got no choice. Your Honor, let's hear her testimony. If it means we're going to hear the whole truth, I say we should not silence her. Ha! Nicely done, Trite. Very well! Let's hear the witness's testimony! Please tell us what had happened at the inner temple, after the murder! Yes, sir. After I woke up, I began channeling and my spirit left me, as it were. The little Pearly was there at the inner temple, too. After the incident. Pearly was also stuck in the inner temple side that night. The next morning, she looked around, but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Gatto arrived at the inner temple for the first time. He found Pearly first, and cheered her right up. Who is this Pearly? That's my little cousin, Pearl Fay. When'd you hear about this? Oh, just a while ago, when I was in the medical office. I'm terribly sorry. What you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. What? Come on. Pearly would never tell a lie. She's a way more honest person than I'll ever be. Real smart, Maya. You always know the best things to say when you're under oath. Ha! The prosecution has no objection. We believe the witness. Mr. Gatto! Let's just move on to the cross-examination. If the defense has no objections. I mean, of course the prosecution believes it, because it's helpful! We're getting away with it! This is highly unusual, but... Well, Mr. Wright! 
Let's get this cross-examination started. Okay. All right, here we go. Early was also stuck in the Inner Temple side at night. Next morning, she looked around but couldn't find anyone. The next day, when the bridge was finally fixed, she was in the spare prep room. That's when Mr. Gatto arrived at the Inner Temple for the first time. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. Ah, uh, she wasn't... Now, she did burn these at some point. He found Pearly first and cheered her right up. I thought we found Pearl, yeah. So it was your first time on the Inner Temple side, Mr. Gatto. <laughs> That's funny. Am I imagining things? Or did the defense ask me a question? Mr. Wright, please save your questions for the witness! What you heard from someone else is simply not admissible as testimony. Those are your words, Your Honor. Touche, Mr. Wright! Oh well! What do you have to say, Mr. Gatto? Hot nights and even hotter coffee. That's what I always say. If it hadn't been for this case, I never would have visited there. The freezing cold temple in the mountains. I think I'll pass. But we had never visited Hazakura Temple or the Inner Temple, huh? Ha! If you want to say something, try it. In any case, I have to find a crack in Gatto's armor. I like cross examine Maya, that is. Very well, please go on with your testimony. After fixing the bridge, the policeman came over to the Inner Temple side, right? Yes, the Mr. Gatto. Found Pearly first and cheered her up. He cheered her up? That's what Pearly said. He said he was a very nice older gentleman. Thank you for looking after my cousin, Mr. Gatto. And here I was thinking you were nothing more than a coffee addict. Ha! Cut it out. You're making me blush. This guy's really beginning to get my nerves in more ways than one. The truth is, there aren't that many places to look on the Inner Temple side. The policemen were all busy going over the garden, but find two to combs. So I decided to carry out an investigation in my own way. Gatto style. I'm the same way! I like to hand out verdicts in my own way! Judge style! <laughs> this is not what you want to hear. Maybe I should ask some questions. Phoenix style! Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So you cheered Pearls up when I found that little girl. The first thing she asked about was her cousin, Maya Fey. Really? The bridge had burnt down and she was huddled up on the, in that tiny shack with no heat, even though she must have had a truly terrifying night out there. She asked about you before she said a thing about herself. Pearly, I noticed that you weren't anywhere on the Inner Temple side, but... I couldn't find it in me to tell her that, so I gave her my last cup. I thought, I don't... With milk and sugar, to hide the bitterness of the, of the harsh truth. Can you give coffee to a kid? I feel like that's gonna be bad for him. Kid that young? Probably shouldn't, I guess you can in theory, but you probably- like, Pearls would have been absolutely wired. <laughs> she would have been like doing backflips when we found her. What a sweet story! Yeah, the thermos of coffee, why does that surprise me? There's only one thing of any importance here. Where was Gato when the murder was taking place? He must have already been at the Inner Temple when it happened. Otherwise he couldn't have killed Elise Donum. Okay, uh, there's another thing we can press in this statement. Okay, it's a bit of a long way to get the Phoenix style. Gatto's investigation. You said that you conducted an investigation of your own. Did you find anything? Looks like my investigation went about as well as yours, Trish. After all, I did miss the blood- The bloody writing on the lantern! Well, I, di I didn't miss it, so speak for yourself, Goggles. The only odd thing I discovered was the beauty in the train and all. Beauty? Misty Faye, naturally. Clad in her stunning Japanese garb, surrounded by 
the hue and aroma of Western tastes. Western tastes? Can he find a stranger way to describe gravy? So from there, you headed to the prep room! Wait a sec. What did the god just say now? I think I just found his proverbial weak spot. There's only one thing of any- Wait! The detail with the gravy is important? Hang on, what did he just admit there? Hang on. Oh shit, he- because if it's covered in gravy... He shouldn't have known that it was Misty Fay. He'd have to have been there before to recognize who that is. That's how we knew. We got him. We got him. Okay, uh, I don't know if it's really... Yeah, the question is, what statement does that apply to? When he arrived at the temple the first time. There we go. Mr. Gatto, the first time you crossed Dusky Bridge and went into the Inner Temple it was long before the murder took place. Why do you say that? Because he just made one fatal slipper. The hanging scroll on the train now. Hanging scroll! But, Mr. Gatto is right. That scroll shows a picture of my mother. Maya, I know you know who it is, but there's something you didn't know. By the time the bridge had been repaired, two days after the murder, the hanging scroll on the train hall looked like this. What's that wonderfully delicious smell? <laughs> More than half of the crime, someone covered it with gravy. Gravy? No, oh, wrong voice. Gravy? But why gravy, Nick? Because gravy was much more than a condiment to the culprit. Well, Mr. Gatto, if you really hadn't seen that the hanging scroll until after the murder, you wouldn't have had any way of knowing that it was Misty Fay. Wait a minute, Nick. Yes? Take another look at the hanging scroll. Look at the top. There's a crest there. Ah, that. It's the mark of the master, correct? Exactly. So if you know the meaning of the mark, then you can guess it was a picture of Misty Fay on there. True. But Mr. Gato described what was underneath like this. Clad in her stood in Japanese garb. Surrounded by the hue and aroma of western tastes. Oh. Yes, it's possible he knew what the crest meant. However, he couldn't have known that she was wearing Japanese clothing. Mr. Gatto, on the day of the murder, you were hiding at the inner temple long before the crime took place. Can I ask you just one... Can I ask you just one little thing, Trite? What is it? This whole theory of yours. It all rests on a certain assumption. That I knew beforehand that a crime was going to be committed. That's right. Otherwise, there's no reason for him to sneak onto the crime scene. Of course, Mr. Gatto knew about the plan. What did you just say? Is it really possible that another person knew of that plan? Uh... Oh, okay, I, I know what it is. It's because of Iris' testimony. We, we, we kind of know. Do we have Iris' testimony? Another person knew of that, that, that plan. Yeah, it, it's just Iris, isn't it? I think it's just Iris. Mr. Wright! At this stage of the game, a mere guess is simply unacceptable. What? So in the end, you were just bluffing, huh? Well, don't expect any sympathy cards from me, Trite. Oh, I couldn't save it! There's only one way you could have known about the crime. Mr. Wright, I'll give you just one chance! Was he working with Misty Fay? Was he working with Morgan for some reason? I just want to try this one. No, okay. 
So it had to have been Morgan. Is it Morgan? Ha! Ah. Is that a person near the plant? I, I tried Iris. Is it specifically Dahlia? <laughs> Pearls had an idea of the plan. I just Maya herself? I mean, Maya's here. Like, it's. I thought that's already apparent. Take that. <laughs> I, I don't. Who's the mastermind? I th I thought I've presented everything. I thought we've gone through all the witnesses. There's one mastermind I can think of. The man who has orchestrated all of these crimes. Who wouldn't let you get away with this, Phoenix. You can never escape my clutches. No matter how hard you try, I will follow you to the bitter end.
To say. So what I believe you were trying to say is, you've lost. I've lost? You're guilty. What? Von Karma? no, he didn't, I didn't, you, that's not- Okay, okay, I see what's happening here. You face to face with greatness and you flail. You don't even know how you feel. It's pathetic. Well, it's nice to see defense attorneys fail. The case is done, let it end. Yes, it's I, Von Karma, a godsend. I know I'm the best, the charm, the bond. When you're staring at a lawyer god, what can I say except you're guilty? For my crimes, the kill my high. Yes, for you see, you see, you're guilty. Ha! I'm just a perfect prosecutor guy. Yes. Who had a gun and need that to die when he was just a stupid child. This guy, when the night got cold, whose fire for revenge overflowed. You're looking at him, yo. Oh, ah, uh, so I tortured his son. You're guilty to make him suffer and bring me fun. Ah, uh, so I tampered the gourd. You're guilty. There's no one I won't try extort. So what can I say except you're guilty for my crimes and his need to die? There's no need to fight. You've lost. You're guilty. Ha! You can wait when in this case. Goodbye. You're guilty. You're guilty. Well, come to think of it, right? Honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every case I've won. The court, the judge, my crown. That was one camera just bribing her around. I killed a man, buried the bullet. Lodged on my shoulder, no way to bullet. What's the lesson? What's the takeaway? I never lose, you're throwing your job away. And the blood that you're here in my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look why, Ben, I'm the perfect record. Look at my history, I deserve an award. Ha, 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 ha. Well, anyway, let me say you're guilty. <laughs> My wonderful world you abhor You pathetic loser You're guilty Well ten minutes have passed It's time to go Yes but you see it's clear You're guilty So I'm off to Germany I'm running away Away You're guilty A fun karma wins cases dirtily You're guilty You're guilty Case is closed. Von oh, Karma, no! Ladies and gentlemen, you're guilty. Animated. <laughs>
Uh, Wolfsy Draws has done a phenomenal job on this project for, like, the last while. Kelly's helped with the music edit, and we got it all together in time for the finale for Phoenix Wright. It's up now on the YouTube channel. You can listen and watch it whenever you fancy. Uh, I, I think this might be the only fan animation of Manfred von Kammer to actually exist. I, I think this is it. I don't think anyone else has done this. <laughs> uh, but there you go. Thank you so much to Wolfsy for working so hard on that, because a good animation takes a tremendous amount of time. Uh, pop out a tweet just to like kind of her, her handle now on Twitter if you want to go say hey. Uh, the video is live now on YouTube as well. If you want to leave, like, any comments or say, hey, send well wishes, there's links in the description as well for everything you could possibly need there. I hope people enjoy that, yeah. It's a damn good animation. She really did amazing. Like, Kelly as well in the audio edit uh, really just kind of, like, like, touched it up and actually just made it so much better than it had any right to be. Thank you to the two of them. And, of course, Manfred von Karma. <laughs> For providing my vocal talents. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I I'm just gonna pop out... Uh, just a quick old link on the Discord. A quick old link. Hang on, let me just get the... Some background music. There we go. We'll just go back to the case. Let me just pop a quick, a cheeky link to it. Thank you, everyone, for coming by. I thought you might want to see that live. Yeah. I really do, do hope people like it. We have some fantastic animators in the community, honestly. Wolfsey did a phenomenal job on this. It's so damn good. Like, I've seen it, like, 50 times already. <laughs> I've just been kind of, I, I've just been watching it back, like, the last week. Ah, oh, God almighty. Okay, uh, let me just do a Discord tag. Let's get this up. Please do go send your love on the YouTube video and go send a lot of love to Wolfsy and Kelly. Links for them both are in the description of the video. Please do go say hey. Please give them a clap. Give them some hearts. Let me just pop that on the Discord. There we go. I believe that's all displaying okay on the YouTube end too. I'm just doubly making sure. Just don't want it to be like something to have gone wrong. There we go. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah, there you go, folks. I hope everyone enjoyed that. That's something very special that's been in the works. Uh, to ring out the end of Ace Attorney. Thank you so much again to Wolfsey and Kelly. I hope everyone enjoyed that. Uh, let me get your audio back. Let me get your game back. Thank you to everyone who gave gift subs there as well. Two bullets. Uh, Nas, HD. B, thank you for the 5k bits. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, I, thank you to everyone who's just showing support. I hope everyone enjoyed that. And if you just hopped over for the video, you're just in time for the very end. <laughs> Is the, I still don't know. I was thinking about it while the like that was playing. I still don't know who did this. Is there really another per person who knew of the plan? I was trying to give it a think. That was me biding for time more than anything. <laughs> uh, who do we think did it? I don't know. Gumshoe? I Is it really possible another person knew of the plan? Uh, maybe just the burnt letter that indicates that other people knew? Okay, yeah, there we go. Okay. We got it this time. This crime was actually planned over a year ago. Morgan Fay offered the plan for her daughter's future. And these instructions were hidden somewhere in Fay Manor for over a year. However, by the time Little Pearls found these instructions, they had already been unsealed. Unsealed?! Yes, the killer had read these instructions long before Pearls ever found them. 
That's how, that's how he knew the crime was to take place at the Inner Temple. And you still insist this crafty killer is me. You bet I do. But you just said that the instructions were hidden. That's right. Mr. Gatto couldn't have known where the instructions were hidden. If he really wanted to know, he had one great chance to find out. Yes, and what was that? During a visit. A visit? Morgan Fay told her daughter, Pearl, about where the instructions were hidden. During one of her visits to the detention center. It would be the only time for someone to have learned where they were hidden. Eavesdropping on a visit at the detention center? Yes, it could be arranged for you or someone with easy access in and out of there. Like, for example, a prosecutor, such as Mr. Gatto. Order, order! Mr. Grotto, you're under fire again! This murder could not have been carried out without prior knowledge. And you. You were the only one that could have acquired this information before the murder. It's rather ominous when the ice cream van starts blaring at the mention of murder. <laughs> oh, did you just hear the ice cream there? Did you just hear it? It's rather menacing this time. The murder van. <laughs> Humans are afraid of the dark. And yet, at the same time, we're fascinated and bewitched by it. Maybe that's why humans drink the darkness that is coffee. Um, sorry for always asking, but what does that mean? It means there's a reason for everything. According to your theory, the killer in this case eavesdropped on a conversation during a jail visit when he learned of a hidden plan for a crime. After discovering the plans, he hid in the inner temple and waited for the crime to occur. Then he ultimately took a person's life. And he did all of that just to protect his witness. That's right. If you're accusing me of this crime, I have to ask you, why would I do this? This girl is nothing but a stranger to me. I've got no reason to go through that kind of trouble to protect her. Uh, I mean... Okay, we already know that's a lie. We already... I am what you see. I'm certainly not the type to rescue the damsel in distress. The killer's behavior is certainly extreme, for lack of a better word. Even considering that the killer wanted to protect this witness's life, his behavior is still a little too unnatural. However... You had good reason, didn't you, Mr. Gatto? An unshakable reason that forced you to protect this witness at all costs. I knew it. You figured it out, haven't you, Nick? Maya. Guess you were doing your best to cover for Gatto. For the same reason, huh? Okay, Trite. I'm all ears. Let's hear it. Let's quickly save here in case. <laughs> It's very simple. Maya Faye is more... Is a lot more than just a stranger to you. What's this? There's one person who lies at the very center of this whole story. One person that ties you and Maya Faye together inextricably. There's a very good reason why Maya's fa Maya Faye's life is so precious to you. After all... She is Mia Faye's only sister. Mia. Bay. You once worked alongside her. That was when you were a defense attorney. Wait a second here! Mr. Gatto is... is a defense attorney! Oh yeah, because of course, that's illegal. That's the startling revelation here. Wait a minute! <laughs> Nothing else matters in this instance. Like, you can't do that! With your honor's piercing intellect, you must have figured it out by now. The real name of this man who calls himself Gatto. His real name is... Diego Armando. Isn't that right? Uh, Cinder, thank you for the 1500 bits. Thank you very much for the kind words. I worked as a security guard at a casino, so the first couple of cases were a weird parallel, being about security and gambling. <laughs> that is funny. Thank you very much. The last time someone called me by that name. It was over six years ago. Diego Armando! That name rings a bell! It should, Your Honor. All of this is related to a single case. A case in which a convict named Terry Falls killed himself. 
Mia Fey's first time in court. The tragic outcome left a deep wound in her heart. She knew that behind it all was a heartless, scheme and demon, demoness in disguise. But in the end, Mia couldn't tear off that disguise. However, there was one man who reached out to help her. Diego Armando, a senior defense attorney at the office where Mia worked. My fault, it's all my fault that Mr. Falls killed himself. Mia, you can't cry yet. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. I was moved by her. The way she put all her fate in her clients. That pure sweetheart of hers. That's why. I can never forgive Dahlia Hawthorne. Mia and I thoroughly investigated that fake kidnapping incident. In one fateful day, Dahlia wanted to meet with me. It had been six months since the trial. We met in the courthouse cafeteria. Oh, I just remembered! Six years ago, right here in this courthouse! You were poisoned! Even I didn't see it coming. Dahlia Hawthorne slipped some poison into my coffee. Some newspapers at the time called it a murder! Very little information about the case was released to the press! But you weren't dead at all. No official reports ever actually called it a murder. I was just in a deep deep coma. I see. My body shut down, and my life became nothing but a long, deep sleep. That woman's poison did a real number on my central nervous system. I lost my sight, and all of my hair turned to white due to the damage it caused. That's terrible. Apparently it was a miracle that I ever regained consciousness. Five years have passed since I drank that poisoned brew. And one morning, my eyes flew open from the smell of a doctor's cup of coffee. Five years! You were asleep for five years! And the worst possible news was waiting for me. Mia Fey was dead. From the very moment I opened my eyes, I had already lost everything I thought I had. The woman I loved had been murdered. And the woman I loaded had been sentenced to death. The woman you loaded! The woman who had spiked my skull to knock coffee. Dahlia Hawthorne. Ha! Good old Mia. She didn't let me down. She got her revenge before she checked out. In the end, there wasn't anyone waiting for me when I woke up. That's so sad. For someone like me. For someone who had slept away their best days. There were only two reasons left to live. And it was for those two reasons I decided to become a prosecutor. If I may ask, what were your two reasons to live? The first was you, tried. Huh? Me? If I hadn't drank that stupid poison, Mia Fey never would have died, much less the way she did. You were the only one who was there to protect her, but you let her die. It was all your fault. I... it wasn't like that. I wanted to see for myself what kind of a man you really were. So that's why you became a prosecutor! I had a reason for living. She goes by the name of Maya Fey. Ah, huh? you mean me? You are the only way I can make up for the sin of not saving Mia. One year ago, when the Karain Village incident was resolved, it was obvious that Morgan Fey was planned something. Whatever evil plan was, I was determined to stop it. My role as a prosecutor put me in the perfect position to do something about her. That's how you overheard Pearl's visit with Morgan at the detention center. I knew that the time was drawing near. Since I knew the plan, I thought I could foil it. My goal was to outwit the plan. I thought if I could do that, I could keep that girl from being caught up in it. That makes sense. If Pearls had known that the actual purpose of the plan was to kill Maya, she never would have helped out. Finally, the day of the plan was drawing near. I contacted both of my accomplices. Accomplices? Iris of ha Hazakura Temple and Misty Fay. They especially needed the help of Iris. She was to take the fall of my backup plan, in case we couldn't control Pearl Fay. But, how'd you contact my mother? She'd been missing for almost 20 years. Officially, yes. What? What do you mean, officially? You've heard about it, haven't you? 
about the strong ties between the main family and the government. Now do you mention it? Bikini did say something to that effect. He said that the master of Karen had great authority. Even without her official position, Misty Fay will still still wield a great influence. The police have been keeping an eye on her movements all this time. That's how I was able to contact her. Again, because of my position as, as a prosecutor. So my mother was cooperating with you. Don't ever forget. No matter how far away from you she was, she never stopped thinking about you. He was always... That's why. I knew she would do anything to protect you. If you want to know how strong and resolved to protect you was, look at her staff. Her staff? The one with the sword in it! The day the plan was to be carried out arrived soon enough. We met for the first time at Hazakura Temple. That's when your mother showed me her special staff. I realized it then, just how far she was willing to go. She was ready to use that sword to protect you from Morgan Fay, if necessary. Yes, even if it meant paying the ultimate price. Mother. That night, the night of the crime, there was just one way to stop Morgan's evil plan. You mean pearls, don't you? We had to make sure she didn't channel Dahlia Hawthorne. Well, Pearl, what are you going to do tonight? Well, um... If you'd like, you can come to my room. Perhaps we can read some books together. We thought we could prevent her from playing her part in Morgan's plan, but she never showed up. She was worried and followed me to the inner temple. That was the thing we were most afraid of. And that's why Misty Fay had to do the channeling herself. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne into her own body. What? What do you mean? If she channeled the spirit first, then Pearls wouldn't be able to do it herself. As master of Karain, Misty Fay's power was supreme. That's how it went down. She channeled Dahlia Hawthorne so that Pearl Fay wouldn't be able to. Ah. What? Is this true? My role in the plan was to make sure no one was going to hurt Maya Faye. That's why I hid myself at the Inner Temple. Just in case I needed to be saved from Dahlia Hawthorne. Gatto. Anyway. That's all I'm going to admit to. Trite. Huh? There's no doubt about it. You're a great defense attorney. But you're going to have to do the rest yourself. The background leading up to this incident has been laid bare. There's just one question remaining, Mr. Wright. Who killed the victim? There are only two possible suspects right now. Maya Fay. And I'm sad to say, you, Mr. Grotto. Well, Trite, if you're the real deal, then finish this thing once and for all. Show us beyond a shadow of a doubt that you can finish this on your own. No, Nick. Please don't. Maya. I, I heard the whole thing from my sister in the medical office. That's why, that's why I have to protect Mr. Gatto. I can't do it. I can't testify against him. After all, he's the man who put his life on the line to protect Mia and me too. Maya, I know that. Nick. But even so, it doesn't absolve him of his crime. Please, Maya, testify. Miss Fay, your testimony, please. This is the final testimony. Don't bother trying to hide anything, because I'll know. I want to hear the truth from your own lips. I understand. I'm sure you're right. I'm ready now, Nick. All right, young lady. Tell us about the moments before you lost consciousness. What exactly happened at the time of the murder? Time of the murder, the final testimony. This is it. Just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights. Three of them. I thought I'd ask for help, but just then I was splattered with blood. She wasn't dead though, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly the red lights went out and the whole area was dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. Right after that, Dahlia collapsed and I lost consciousness. These red lights! I thought you said you don't remember seeing them! I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but then they disappeared all of a sudden. 
Ha! Things break trite. Even the best of theories. Who was it that stabbed Misty Fay? Looks like you still can't prove it. My eyes telling the truth this time, I know it. The rest is up to me. Well, Mr. Wright, proceed with your final cross-examination of the witness! Here we go. Save it here. This is it. I think I saw some red lights. Three of them. Lights shine in the dark. I don't think he could make a mistake about that. Yeah, you're right. I think I saw him, but... I can't say for certain. And I can't tell you for sure they were from Mr. Gatto's mask either. I don't get the feeling she's covering for her anymore, but press harder. Just after that, you turned towards the lights and called for help. Isn't that because you thought the lights were coming from Mr. Gatto's mask? Yeah, I guess so. Maybe that's what I was thinking at the time. But I can't remember. After all, there was a person I couldn't identify in front of me. Lonnie's life was in terrible danger was in terrible danger at the time. There's no way she can remember the details of the scene perfectly. Alright then, let's go on with the testimony! What'd you do when you saw the red lights? I thought I asked for help, but then I was splattered with blood. That blood. Was it Dahlia Hawthorne's blood? I think so, probably. Just at that moment, I heard a soft scream that seemed to be close by. It was a woman's voice. That was when the killer stabbed the victim from behind with the murder weapon! Is that right? Without a doubt, Maya was in the middle of a really dangerous situation. Anyway, the victim was stabbed by the murder weapon. What happened after that? She wasn't dead though, and she struck back at the enemy behind her. Struck back? How do you know that? Well, you're right. Well, well, you're right. I didn't see it exactly, but I could tell. I could tell by the sounds of their breathing and movement, and also the smell of blood. You witnessed more horror than any young lady should ever have to in one life. You've been at the center of, like, 15 murders at this point, Maya! So then, what did you do at that point? I couldn't move. I could just barely make out the shadows moving in the dark, but... I had no idea what to do. You still see the red lights you mentioned earlier? Yes, I think so, but... Suddenly the red lights went out and the whole area was dark. They went out! Yeah, suddenly I couldn't see them at all. What could they mean? The red lights were coming from Gato's mask, and they went out right in the middle of a fight. Maybe the ma maybe the mask was damaged. Or maybe it was knocked off. Or maybe the batteries ran out, right, Trite? Or maybe those little red those little red pinhead looking lights just stopped working. What could have really happened then? At that moment there was a horrible scream. What do you mean by just at that moment? Do you mean the moment when the red lights went out? Yes, that's right. The scream that you heard then was a Dahlia Hawthorne. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a man's voice. What? Zodan, that scream came from the killer! That's got to be it. I think. Dahlia Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. But then the killer let out a scream of pain, huh? After that, the killer stole the blade back and delivered the final blow, I guess. Well, Mr. Wright, it seems to make sense to me. This knife... The blood doesn't match the victims. This is the knife Gata was attacked with. Sounds like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. I'm sorry to say this, but that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. That makes sense! After all, my deductions were almost certainly never correct! Why are you here? Remember the testimony she just gave? Before the killer let out a scream, Maya said she had already been splattered by the victim's blood. In other words, the blade and the staff had already been plunged into the victim. Ah, is that right? She couldn't have struck back with a sword that was already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer to let out a scream must have been something other than the staff. If you're so sure about that, then don't keep us waiting any longer, Trite. There's only one thing I can think of that could have been used as the weapon here. Dahlia Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff. 
what, she, what could she have used to strike back at the killer? The knife. Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that! This dagger was found at the crime scene, stuck into a pine tree. Yes, the detective found out this morning and brought it to me. Dahlia Hawthorne st struck back at the killer with this. And she managed to wound him as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood in the dagger could have been from the victim. Have you forgotten that the blood has already been tested? Since we learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's blood. The killer must have a wound some <laughs> They learn from the best phoenix they have concealed the wound. What will you do now without your precious metal detector? Oh <laughs> karma, no! Not again! So you're saying the blood in this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. A DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Gatto, it would prove that it's your blood. Nice theory, try. Order! Order in the court! Is this the end? Have I done it? Even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Ha! Let me ask you something, try. Let's just say that it turned out that I was the killer. Do you really think I would be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found this morning by a detective and brought to me. There was already blood in it, correct? But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Yes! What is that proof? Well, if I really were the killer, I could have washed the blade off and then planted another person's blood in it. That's... It can't be- No, we can't see blood! In any case, there's only one, there's one thing I can guarantee, Trite. That blood. It doesn't belong to me. Not a chance. Oh, it's only red on white he can't see. Oh, okay. In any event, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. Alrighty then, witness. Continue with your testimony. Wait a minute. What's the problem? I... I know I probably shouldn't say this, but there's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation. Maya, this dagger, you said that it wounded the killer. That's right. But, 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 if Mr. Gatto had really been cut with the dagger, his clothes should be bloody or have a rip in them, right? <laughs> uh, Maya, <laughs> maybe he just changed his clothes. That solved the contradiction pretty easily. What are you talking about? It's not that simple at all. Remember back to the day of the murder. Everyone that was on the Inner Temple side got trapped there. Oh, that's right! Once the bridge was fixed and the police headed for the Inner Temple. Mr. Gatto was already there waiting for him. He never had a chance to change his clothes. Oh, is it below the visor? Order! Order in the court! What the witness says is... Well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. No one could have predicted the lightning strike that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone have brought a change of clothes? The judges take smart pills during the last recess. Oh, no. Well, then, maybe the killer took off his clothes before he committed the murder. That way, he wouldn't get any blood in them. Objection. That's impossible, Trite. You know how cold it gets up there late at night. After a few minutes with no clothes on, you'd be frozen solid. That's all you've got. I knew you weren't tough enough to finish this. Right now, if Mia Faye were here. If Mia Faye were here, she would have closed she would have closed the book in this case already. If Mia Faye were here. But come on, try. Can you do it or not? How about it, Mr. Wright? You've accused Mr. Gatto of being the killer! Can you prove it? 
Have you got even one piece of evidence? The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is, I have to prove it. That's the only choice I have. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. I can prove it. I'm going to bring your magnificent vengeance to fruition. Just as you want. Ha! That's good. Fight it to the bitter end, Trite. Since there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point. Why don't we go for the ultimate penalty? Are you trying to pressure me, Mr. Gatto? Because it doesn't matter to me. I've got the one piece of evidence I need. Give me a break, you've got nothing, Trite. So what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I've got to think outside the box and approach this from a different angle. All right then, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what, let's hear what you've got. There's one thing I've demonstrated in the previous cross-examination. The killer was wounded. That was proven by the blood in his dagger. But we decided it was impossible for, to have, for him to have hidden such a wound. If he'd been cut by a dagger, there shouldn't be a blood stain on his clone. There's one place. One place the killer could have hidden his wound. What did you say? Hidden. This is it. My last stand. I need to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there was no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hid the wound. It's the end of the line. The final stop, Trite. Let's hear what you've got. Where's this location where you say the killer hid his wound? Your Honor, it's underneath my badge, because this proves that I am a lawyer. <laughs> ha. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know is that you'll never be half the lawyer she was. Isn't that right, Trite? Well, looks like you've proven one thing. That you're nothing but a fake! Wait a minute, that's not Phoenix! That's Don Tigre! <laughs> Wait a minute, give me one more chance! I don't think so! A promise is a promise! Ha! It was fun while I lasted. See you later. Try. That's enough! This court sees no reason to further prolong this trial! Oh, is there any more- Any need for more time to decide the case against the defendant? This case is extremely clear! I see no room for misinterpretation of the facts! This court finds a defendant, Iris of Hasakura Temple! It was absolutely worth it. It was absolutely worth it. <laughs> I believe Phoenix Wright is over. No. <laughs> Okay, here we go. We get to listen to the initial pursuit music again. As we like gloss through the text real quick. It's probably the best pursuit theme of the series. Go back to where we were. How he hid the wound. Where's the location you said the killer hid the wound? Underneath your mask. Ha! I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know is that you'll never be half- Wait, wait! Isn't that right, Trite? Oh! What was that just now? Mia. It can't be. You're living on. Through him. Even as we speak, you're still hiding the wound. It's beneath your mask. 
During the fight, the red lights given off by the killer suddenly disappeared. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right, your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Gatto, would you mind removing your mask? If you have a dagger wound under there somewhere. Then I'd say this whole case is solved. Ah. I'm sorry, I was just waiting for my coffee. Just now, I saw a spirit in you. I never liked you. Six years ago. You helped the woman who put me to sleep by hiding her bottle of poison. And then, while I was sleeping, you let me die. But you didn't care. You just kept living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. You even had the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. I could never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Gatto! But... I was wrong about you. I knew it from the very beginning. The truth is, the only person I could never find it in my heart to forgive was me. Yourself! I was the only I was the one that failed to protect Mia. Me and no one else. I tried to avert my eyes from the truth, to escape from the harshness of reality. I just couldn't face Mia's death head on, so I ran. I hid behind a mask. I threw away my true name. I couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But you saved Maya! Yeah, that was my plan. Up until just now, anyway. What do you mean? Are you listening, Maya? If I had really wanted to save you, then there's one person that I should have gone and talked to right away. Who would that be? Are you talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother, but I closed my eyes to the most important man involved. You know why? The real reason. No, why? I suppose. I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I was just trying to salvage what's left of my own broken soul. I was trying to make up for the fact that I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. That's why I let you walk right into a situation that I knew was dangerous. Forgive me. You're wrong. You put your life on the line to save Maya. Was it really for Maya's sake? Even I'm not really sure. What do you mean by that? That night, in the darkness of the garden, when I saw a silhouette. Part of me must have known the truth. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay. Or even that little girl. But I still picked up the blade. It was like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. Was I really motivated by the pure desire to protect Maya Faye? Or was it something else? Was it my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier? Could it have been simply a desire for revenge? And now, I don't know anything anymore. I did learn some today, however. I finally realized I was the arrogant one. I was just chasing an illusion. A fantasy. A stupid fantasy of defeating you in a courtroom. You were the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from Mia's death. Instead, you picked up where she left off, as a true defender of the people. In that one moment, I understood everything. Mr. Gatto. I think you already know this, but if you don't, my name is Diego Armando. Mr. Armando, I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. Hmm. 
Thanks. Your wound. It's bleeding. Ha! Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. These must be my tears. Tears? Ever since I woke up from my coma, I think I've been waiting for this very moment. Mr. Armando! You do well to remember this, Maya. The one time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. This time, it really is all over, isn't it? Defendant. Yes, Your Honor. Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, tampering with the body in the crime scene is a serious offense in itself. I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Armando explained, every explained that to me very carefully. I knew the risk and I willingly cooperated anyway. Very well. Before I hand out my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? Well, there is one thing. I'd like to say something to Mr. Wright. I want to... I want to apologize to you. Apologize to me? For what? For the case five years ago, of course. I just remembered! Weren't you poisoned by your own lover? Not exactly, but yeah, something like that. Even now. Five years later, I can hardly believe it. She was going to do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all- it's not all that surprising. The two of you. You hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. Oh shit! We only met twice! The first time you met was on that fateful day. The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria of this very courthouse. The next time you met her was eight months later. You met her again the day that she stole your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. No way! It just... it can't be true! I mean, during our whole relationship, we were... For those eight months, the woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne wasn't actually my sister. It wasn't Dahlia. I hope one day you can forgive me. Beanie. <laughs> Wait a minute! That's not Iris! That's Don Tigre! <laughs> Walk in here! <laughs> you. You mean? That's right. I'd lie to you. For eight months. But why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you the bottle that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she possibly could. Because of the police investigation and their surveillance, she couldn't move about freely. So that's why you, my sister, in the beginning she was prepared for the worst. Prepared for the worst? She thought that you might somehow discover the truth. That's why she was always ready to deal with you at a moment's notice. I mean, she was ready to kill me, don't you? She already had so much to answer for. I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. And that's why. She came to me. She came to get the bottle pendant back for me in her place. But I couldn't get you to give it back. I failed at something even as simple as that. Eight months passed, and I still couldn't get it back from you. Finally, my sister couldn't wait any longer. She didn't consult me about her plans for you that day. It wasn't the first time that that had ever happened. It was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until that day, you two were partners in crime, and she would confer with you. I think you must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you. If I had found out, if I had found out she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her, even if it meant her life or mine. Iris! After spending those eight months by your side, my feelings towards you, they changed. I have something to say to you too. This is my badge, and it proves 
I'm a lawyer. Sorry, carry on. Yes? You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believe in you. Thank you. How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years? Even I don't know. I'll tell you though. Right now, this one here is the greatest cup I think I've ever had. Don't you think so? Phoenix, right? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Why have I got coffee? <laughs> the purpose of this trial was to ruin the murder of the victim, Elise Stoneham. At some point, I expect you will be tried for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Very well! On the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant. Court is now adjourned! Gatto is just like kind of running out of the court case. He's like, Excuse me, Your Honor, I really need the bathroom. I'm gonna blow any moment. I've had way more than 17 cups. <laughs> ah, Gatto! Good to see you in the toilet with the toilet chums. Pull up a chair! Have a seat with us! <laughs> Do I ever dig end it? Was justice really served? The man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison by my own hand. Of course justice was served. Mia! I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. But I couldn't save Mr. Armando. The man who cared so deeply for you. You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him in the only way possible. You mean, with that verdict? I think one day, you'll understand too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. You were as good out there today as any defense attorney could ever hope to be. Quick aside, if Armando was found guilty of murder, doesn't that mean he's going to receive the death penalty? I don't know how much saving we've done here. Uh oh. There's nothing more you can learn from me. Mia, you've accomplished something I wasn't able to. I owe you a great deal. Thank you. Mia, I'm sure we'll meet again someday, Phoenix. I've handled lots of cases and seen a lot of things. And along this journey, I found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? I suppose today's case produced one possible answer. Nick. Maya. I guess it's just like my sis said. Mia, what did she say? That night when I channeled Mia to get her advice on what to do, this is what she wrote back in my notebook. Don't worry, Phoenix will save everyone in the end. But... Come on, cut, cut it out with that gloomy face. Can't you see? Me, sis, and I'm sure Iris too. We owe you for everything you have done for us, Nick. Maya. How? How can you be so bright and chipper after all that's happened? You were brutally attacked. You even saw your mother murdered. Yeah, oh. Francisca! Still as softy as always. Phoenix, right? Excellent work, Phoenix. Huh? Mr. Edgeworth? When did you get back? Oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edgeworth and Francisca have actually been helping me. Helping you? These two hadn't been here on the first day of the trial. The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Wow, but where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into a river and caught a nasty cold which forced him to sleep all day. Yes, he laid in bed shivering from his fever with Iris's hood pulled over his head. Oh, ouch. Talk about embarrassing, Nick. You definitely need more training. Anyway, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth. And you too. Um, Francisca. <laughs> I don't suppose. 
There's room for me in this group hug, is there? No, there isn't, Larry. Go on home. There's no room here. No, no, you can just, you can just fuck right off, Larry. Oh, Larry! What's with the, uh, longer than usual face? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of any use to anyone. Not even once. That's not true, right, Nick? What? You're asking me? Well, Nick, is it true? I've got a place in this world, right? Huh? Oh, uh, sure. I knew it. Everyone would be better off if I was gone, if I were gone for good. No, no, am I? Oh, yeah. Those portraits you painted, they were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? What? Me? Why are you making that face, huh, Edgy? Oh, well, um, yes, indeed. I certainly can't say that they lack resemblance. Do you really mean it? What about you, Franzi? Did I draw you as well, too? Did I draw you well, too? My beauty cannot possibly be captured by mere crayon. Nevertheless, I recognize the effort you put into it, and that's worth something. So then you'll do it like you promised. You're going to model for- wait, what? Don't get carried away. Well, how about that? I guess painting portraits is the only thing I'm good at. Painting a pearl was pretty darn good too, if you ask me. Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls. Where could she have gone? Normally she would have made a beeline for Maya. Oh, I'll go look for her. Be right back. Hey, Pearly. Right. You seem to be uncharacteristically uncharacter puzzled. I suspect you are wondering how Maya can be so cheerful despite all that has happened. Yeah. To be honest, I can't understand it either. Franziska. That's right. She lost her father fairly recently as well. Might have had a part in that. Uh -oh. Don't worry, my precious Franziska. I will always be watching. Anytime you step inside an elevator, just know my spirit is with you. I think I finally understand how she feels. Maya is a much wiser person than she appears, and I think she realizes something. Now is exactly the time when she needs to be as strong as she can be. What do you mean by, mean by now is exactly the time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded by this incident. In fact, there was someone that was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for that person that Maya is trying her best not to cry. Someone who was hurt more deeply than Maya. Edgeworth. I think I'm starting to understand, too. Oh! Then tell me, Phoenix Wright. Who is Maya Faye being strong for? I mean, it has to be Pearl. But the badge! We already got the badge we're going in. Pearl Faye. Poor kid. After all, the reason that she worked so hard to follow the instructions is because she loved and believed in her mother, Morgan. For the good of the Fae Clan. I'm sure she believed in every last word. She thought she was doing it for Maya. That's why she was so happy. It shows how truly devoted she is to Maya. But it's a cruel irony that it was her exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Fae's mother was killed, and Maya herself was put into the deepest peril imaginable. That's exactly why Maya is putting on a brave face. She's doing it for Pearl's sake. Until she can see her smile again. Oh, hey! So this is where you all were? Wow, looks like we got quite the bunch here today. Oh! Youch! What was that for, sir? Sorry about that, Scruffy. My whip just seems to have a mind of its own. What's up, Detective Gumshoe? Oh, you know. This and that. Anyway, congrats on your win. Let's go out tonight, pal. Dinner's on me. My salary's... just sorta of, kinda of gone down by a teeny-weeny bit. But it's alright. I made reservations at a first-class French restaurant tonight. Ah! Pretty good work, Scruffy. That whip was your reward. Um, Detective Gumshoe. You said a first-class French restaurant. You don't mean... Trebian? Where else? Oh, no. I knew it. We're doomed. Come on, let's go, everyone. Can't keep Maggie waiting, pal. Hey, you. 
Hey, you, Cryberry, you're invited too. Oh, forget about me. Pearl and I will be at the losers shack eating potatoes. You know, Maya's taken an awfully long time to get back. Still out looking for pearls. Oh, Maya, what's wrong? Nick, what do, what do I do? Pearly, I can't find her anywhere. Huh? I'll bet you just went back home. That's all. I thought so too, so I called the village. But no one has heard from her. This has never happened before. As I figured, she's been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that has befallen you, Maya. But none of this was her fault. But what should I do? Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, what is it, pal? Could you guys go on ahead. But, but what about you? Maya and I will. We'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick. Don't worry about us, Detective Gumshoe. We may be a little late, but we'll definitely be there. We have a lot of celebrating to do tonight, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, but you're the- Ah! Very well, Phoenix Wright. We'll go on ahead. Don't keep us waiting, all right? We won't. But where should we look? Where could Pearly have gone? Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think of that Pearls might have gone to. Sakura Temple Main Gate. Asakura Temple? For Pearls, I bet this is a very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. What's this? You're all back again so soon? Sister Bikini. I thought we'd be eating mashed potatoes alone tonight. So she's here. Pearly is here. She's in the training hall. Why don't you hurry along and go see her? Okay. Pearly's not here. Ah, Maya, the hanging scroll. Ah. Someone cleaned it off. Got to be Pearls. Ah. Mystic Maya! Pearly! Why? Why did you just leave like that? Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! I swore. I swore that I would never trouble the two of you ever again. Because it's all my fault that Mystic Maya's mother. That's why you came here. It's the least I could do. Pray for your happiness. You don't have to do that, Pearly. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. Of course, I'm sad that my mother is gone. But how do I say this? I am still happy. You don't have to lie just to make me feel better. No, really. It's true. The only reason I'm still here is at all is thanks to everyone who was there for me. My sis, my mother, Mr. Armando, Nick. And you. If even one of you weren't there, I'm sure I wouldn't still be alive right now. That's why I have to be strong for all the people that were there for me when I needed them. That's all I can really do. Mystic Maya. I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of the Mystic Misty. Sister Bikini. Your mother, Mystic Ma Misty, was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Karain, I don't have the right to face my daughter. But still, Maya is always in my thoughts. It's true. She'll always be with me. Until the day I die. The spirit was with her. That's why your mother was so strong. Even at the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me. Until the day I die, huh? There's a rule or something all masters had to follow, isn't there? To never take the charm off until the day you die. That's the master's talisman. This, the thing that, Mist that Misty kept by her heart and would never take off. It wasn't the container that was important. Rather, it was the contents. That's... Oh, shit. A photo? Ah! Mother... It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect our own lives. What makes us human is that we fight for others. But who do you fight for? How hard must you fight? That's the true measure of what human life is worth. We defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly, be, who are constantly challenged by that question. Oh, 
Wes. Even when the battle is over, and the bonds that connect us are severed, we always return, time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearls, Mr. Armando, and Maya's mother too. I learned that from all of them. Well, shall we get going? Everyone is waiting. Ah! This is a day to remember. A day when a lot of things were finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate what we've overcome today. But, I still can't. Ah, go on, sweetie. You can come back for training in time. Um, okay. Alright. I'm gonna make a brand new start, too. Sister Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. I know, and it won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare reservations for three for when you come back. Waha! Ho ho ho! Hee hee hee! <laughs> Alright. We're gonna have a great feast today, Pearly. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya. I, I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. Uh, you know, there's one thing I don't get. And probably don't want to, but... What is it, Nick? Reservations for training is fine and all. But why for three? Come on, what do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time you can train right alongside us. Huh? <laughs> I'll be waiting for you. Sister Bikini will take special care of you. Huh? Uh, okay, Phoenix is gonna get psychic powers, alright! It'll be great, Nick. We're going to do the special course, naturally. Huh? That's a great idea. After all, Mr. Nick, you'd do anything for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you? Even walk on hot coals, right? We'll have a nice big meal before we come next time. Right, Nick? You know, I was wondering if I can say just one little thing. Sure. Of course you can. Oh, I love this part. I can't wait to hear it. I'm getting goosebumps, too. Well, then. Here goes nothing. And that's the end. I really have to work extra hard now. Master of Crane, the office manager of Wright and Co. Law Offices. And I'll have to be a good big sister to Pearly and Nick, too. Well, as long as I'm not locked up or captured or something like that. It's only happened four times, Maya. So it's true, Mr. Nick really is Mystic Maya's knight in shine and armor. He went through with the special course, all the way to the end. Actually, I heard there's a legendary extra special ultra course here too. I think I'll surprise the two of them by making a secret reservation. Maggie bought me a brand new coat as a present, pal. I feel ten years younger. I'll never take it off. Yes, but somehow you just don't seem the same. I guess the dirty, shabby old overcoat is just more detective-like, sir. Don't worry about it. In the name of love, a man will soil himself silly. Hey, what? <laughs> True love is shit in your pants in your partner's company. Mr. Wright, I'm once again in your debt. Thanks to you. The Treasures of Corrine exhibit was a great success. I even got to see Miss Von Karma, who I hadn't seen for almost a year. She taught me how to use a whip, and said that I must show you what I've learned. Uh oh. Bessie and I started a company called Mask Star to Mask Consultant. We're dedicated to stopping the evil plans of all the criminals in the city? Our motto is, cut it out please. Pretty cute, huh? Well, we also sell plans to criminals as a kind of side business. I wonder if that's okay. Sometimes I think maybe we're the worst criminals. Jesus Christ, Ron. <laughs> I wanted to show my appreciation to Mr. Wright for exterminating Don Tigre, so I lent him $500,000 and the tea set. A special thick tea, one I mixed with my own two hands. I bet he's drinking it now. Win through compromise. He he he.
I'm just old and in the way. A wrinkly, grumpy clown knows waste of flesh. At least, that's what I thought. But my grandkids had a birthday party for me the other day. Talk about embarrassing. 69, no, Mr. Kudo, no. No, you're not. <laughs> As usual, we have an abundance of work to do. We've hired a new programmer to replace Glen L. I do hope everyone will get along. His name is... Adam Matta. As soon as I heard his name, I knew our brain circuits would align perfectly. Lisa Basil, you're so forgettable! Oi, my my! More reporters! Since the murder, we've made so much money, I hardly know what to do. I think the magazines like us, because I provide such a nice visual, especially in spring. I can hardly wait for Iris to come back. Wah ha ha! Ho ho ho! You've turned into such a respectable man, Feeny. It was so sweet of you and everyone else come and visit me here the other day. Of course, I was happy that you constantly had your eyes on me, but I feel kind of bad when the little one slapped you so hard you got a nosebleed. Objection! Oh! Phoenix Wright, Ben, Grom, and Judd. Miles Edgeworth, Sion King. Mia Fey, Christina Catano. Objection. Got him, James C. Wilson. He just chucked his coffee. <laughs> Francisca Von Karma, Janet Hugh, is it? Is that how you pronounce it? Who? Sue? Oh, Jesus. Winston Payne, David Chrislip. Francis Sue, thank you. No! What's this? I'm back from a long and tired vacation. No one is here to greet me. I guess while I was gone, my little whippersnapper buddy quit, and now I've got no one. And what kind of lonely, crazy security room is this supposed to be anyway? What with all the flashing lights and switches? I feel like some sort of space alien. And now what am I gonna do with all these macadamia nuts I brought back for everyone? If I bring them over to Edgy, I know exactly what he said he is to saw him. I really can't accept those. I'm afraid of someone that's painful as this fragile heart. Oh, when will I ever find a gentleman to treat me as a refined lady? Why is she back? I finally found something I love to do. Franzi's whippity whip trip is gonna turn the art world on its head. I should have realized it sooner. Self-centered, lazy, antisocial. I'm an artist. A really good portrait artist. I'm not a loser after all. Larry found his place in life. How oh, bless. Dang's all here. Mia, Gatto, and Misty Fay. I think that's it. That's the end. To everyone here, thank you so much for watching the Phoenix Wright trilogy. I hope everyone has enjoyed this series. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun. Someone asked about the tier list ranking. That one's an A. That one's an A. The Von Camera one is still S. It's the only S because 
Because Von Karam is number one. That one's a solid A. I think the weakest point is probably just the pendulum. <laughs> the pendulum seemed a bit stupid. And it was hard to take that seriously when, like, Misty Fade, like, oh, there she goes. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, I couldn't help but laugh. Which I don't think is what the game wanted me to do. <laughs> but that's the end. Thank you to everyone who enjoyed watching the Phoenix Wright trilogy. From this point on, we got new games coming. Uh, the first of which, I believe we're going to be doing on Thursday. First of which I believe we're going to be doing on Thursday. New games are on the horizon. We have something very different on Tuesday before that. I've been invited to an event uh, by Failbo and Dug Dug. Uh, and so we're going to be checking out some wizardry there. That's going to be very fun for chat. We got something fun. Alright, they set up something fun and they've kindly invited me to it. So I'm excited for that. Thank you to everyone who gave bits during this stream. Thank you to everyone who subbed. Thank you as ever to the mods for being on hand. I think... If we're gonna sign this off proper, there's only one man who can do it. So, one more time, for those who missed it. What I believe you were trying to say is, you've lost. I've lost? You're guilty. What? Von Karma? no, he didn't, I didn't, you, that's not- Okay, okay, I see what's happening here. You're face to face with greatness and you flail. You don't even know how you feel. It's pathetic. Well, it's nice to see defense attorneys fail. The case is done, let it end. Yes, it's I, Von Karma, a godsend. I know I'm the best, the charm, the bond. When you're staring at a lawyer god. What can I say except you're guilty? For my crimes, the guilt, my high. Yes, for you see, you see, you're guilty. Ha! I'm just a perfect prosecutor guy Yes Who had a gun and need that to die When he was just a stupid child This guy When the night got cold Whose fire for revenge overflowed You're looking at him, yo Oh Ah, uh, so I tortured his son You're guilty To make him suffer and bring me fun Ah, uh, so I tampered the gourd you're guilty. There's no one I won't try extort. So what can I say except you're guilty for my crimes and his need to die? There's no need to fight. You've lost. You're guilty. Ha! You can wait when in this case. Goodbye. You're guilty. You're guilty. Well, come to think of it, right? Honestly, I could go on and on. I could explain every case I've won. The court, the judge, my crown. That was one camera just bribing her around. I killed a man, buried the bullet. Lodge on my shoulder, no way to bullet. What's the lesson? What's the takeaway? I never lose your throne, your job away. And the blood that you hear in my skin is a map of the victories I win. Look where I've been, I'm the perfect record. Look at my history, I deserve an award. Ha, 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 ha. Well, anyway, let me say, you're guilty. guilty. My wonderful world you abhor. You pathetic loser, you're guilty. guilty. Well, ten minutes are fast, it's time to go. Ha. Yes, but you ha. see, ha. it's clear, ha. you're guilty. guilty. So I'm off to Germany. I'm running away, away, you're guilty. guilty. Upon Carver wins cases dirtily. You're guilty. guilty. You're guilty. Case is closed. Von Karma, no! Oh, God. Yep. Give it up to Wolfsey. Give it up to Kelly. One more time, please. You can watch that on YouTube. It's there this for you. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. <laughs> Use the no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> 
Sorry, autoplay is struck. <laughs> We're suing Nord. <laughs> We're claiming credit. Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, the next stream from me will be on Tuesday. Yeah, so we have the aforementioned, uh, we have a collab with Phil, Boat, and Doug Doug. I'm quite excited for what's in store. It's going to be a very fun, it's an interactive thing. I don't think it's my place to say it. If they've said it already, then I'm just worrying over nothing. But it's an interactive thing. You guys are going to like it. It's cool. It's really cool what they've done. Very excited. Ah, oh, God. In the meanwhile, let me see who else is streaming. I'm going to leave you in someone's care. Uh, who is all going? Ooh, do, 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 do. Uh, Kiwa's playing Played Up. That sounds like a good time. Go say hey. Wish her well. Yeah, thank you so much for coming, though, folks. I really do hope everyone enjoyed the stream. Thank I hope everyone has enjoyed the Phoenix Wright series. We'll have the highlights of that final case up during the week. It'll take a little while, because it was a long boy. Very long boy. In the meanwhile, though, sure, you got, you got your animation and you got your music. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, thank you so much for coming, folks. I'll see y'all Tuesday. Jesus, the credits are still going. <laughs> There's a lot of people who subbed. Thank you, everyone. Did you like Gato? Gato was cool. Yeah. Yeah, we'll kind of just do it. There we go. There we go. There we go. We can wrap it up there. Thanks for coming, folks. See you all Tuesday. Have a good night. <laughs>